Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, we're back for session two of day three at the F Golf Croquet World Championship 2022. Your commentators this afternoon are John Reddish and Richard Brooks. We've got two camera people for you and the lovely Jack Good is hoping to be updating you with the scores, which I know you all really enjoy to see. Welcome to all of you and have a nice afternoon watching. You're uh, engaged in a match on Lawn 1 here at Southwick, which is between Pierre Baudry, South London's very own Belgian player, and uh, Thomas Remanlis, who is probably and for almost certainly the best player in Latvia. And they are uh, in their second game, best of three. First game was won by Pierre, and Thomas is trying hard in the second. Thomas is about to try and clear the black ball with the red ball on the west, on the east boundary. Black ball is about five yards out from the hoop, but he has his yellow ball placed much tighter to the hoop. So if he can get rid of black, he's in a good position. Which, he's, of course, he has. Yes, well, uh, it's turning out to be rather a good day. This morning, if you were watching, it was very overcast and rather cool. Um, some of the referees were complaining about that. But it's turned out beautiful afternoon, and the temperature, I'm told, is 21 degrees Celsius, and that translates into Fahrenheit, about 70-odd, I suppose. We're, we're about to see a long shot by Pierre trying to clear a yellow ball from in front of Hoop 4. Which he's done successfully. Well, now, you know, this is very impressive, isn't it? Yes. One of the things that Richard and I don't know is uh, when our audience, whether, you've, whether you're really expert players and think that was an easy shot, or whether you're like us, um, <laughs> happy to get anywhere near from that distance. That was what, 20 yards? And yeah, they clear it in this, at this level, they clear that. Thomas looks so he's made the decision to place in front of the hoop here rather than move black, which is. Black is quite an angle from the hoop. He's got a good opportunity to get a ball nicely in front of hoop. And if he gets it exactly right, he can also have a blocking shot. The he's played it in very nicely, but he's overshot the line he would have been aiming for. He's yes, when he's I, now gone east of the hoop. When I said that uh, Richard and I would be struggling from that distance, I, I meant I would. Richard, of course, uh, came close to qualifying for this tournament, so uh, I beg to apologise. Well, <laughs> well, thank you very much, John. But uh, having seen some of the play here, had I got in, I know I would have been struggling. Yeah, it's very high standard. The, uh, the, the play this morning uh, I was watching was very good. And uh, let's see how Thomas can do now. Thomas is now trying to clear the blue ball, which is nicely placed in from about three yards out. In a reasonably straight line to the hoop. And he was successful in that attempt. So yeah, I mean, that, the, these shots are really quite solid and they hit them right on the middle. Um, and uh, this morning, if you were listening and watching, you would have seen uh, Stephen Mulliner uh, playing against Amir, I've got his surname, but he's a young man from uh, Egypt, and they were playing a very, very interesting tactical game, and you were fortunate in having Chris Clark, one of the best players in the world, um, doing his commentary. We're not quite as good as that in terms of the technicalities, but uh, we're assuming that you'll be pleased if we can give you some idea of who's doing what. I think Pierre is considering a hoop shot here. He's certainly taking his time over making the decision on that. We may be just trying to push black out of that. I'm fairly sure this is... No, no, he's going to, push, he's going to put black into the... 
That was an attempted hoop shot, but he hit the left wire. Well, he's saying, I'm in danger. I mean, uh, when people comment on, on sports events, they're supposed to be uh, not partisan. But I'll explain in a moment. <laughs> this is an opportunity for Thomas, with his, using his yellow ball, to push the black ball right out of play into the far corner. Corner one, where the blue flag is on the lawn. And he's done that with reasonable success. At least he's gone as just beyond hoop one. So he hasn't made the corner, but he's gone within five yards of it. And Pierre has played up rather quickly, putting his blue ball into a scoring position. Now, that's a scoring position for players of this calibre. For some of us, that would be a bit of a challenge. I suspect Thomas will be clearing blue with his red. I think uh, unless he places in front of the hoop and then uses yellow to clear blue in the hope that in the meantime blue hasn't achieved its target ball. Sorry, black, that was black, but hasn't achieved its target, potential target. Ah, a blocker. I think this was a, a blocker also taking good position. Yeah. Now, Pierre has responded by trying to get even tighter to the hoop, which he has done, but I don't think he's blocked red. Difficult to tell from their position. This is right. Uh, we, we, of course, can't get right onto the lawn, and we're sitting in the corner um, with a good view, but, of course, we're 35 yards away. We're, we're sitting in corner two, which is in the northeast corner of the croquet lawn, for those of you who are familiar with the terminology of the layout. Uh, perhaps we'll get an opportunity later on to explain a little more between games um, for some people that aren't so aware of the, the layout of a croquet lawn. This is Thomas trying to clear the blue ball, which he's done successfully, but it's Quite likely that won't be far enough to stop Pierre coming back <laughs> and clearing the, the red ball. Yeah, this is the, the standard of play, of course, is very high, particularly when striking from distance and clearing the dangerously placed balls of the opponent. Ah, uh, Pierre's worried about yes, the distraction from somebody walking behind yes, in his eye line. Yes, Pierre is, Pierre is very conscious of movement behind the line. But he's done a nice clearance on red. Yeah, he's pushed it away to the area of hoop one. And that leaves Thomas with a probably a 21-yard shot back to get the black ball. Yeah. Well, as I said, I'm not supposed no, no, not, to... not quite 21. I, I think I've exaggerated there. 16 yards. 16. Back. 16 yards. Right, yeah. yeah, you can yeah. work it out by the distance yeah. between yeah. the hoops if yeah. you know what that is. But 16 yards is still a good shot to make. Ah. Uh, Thomas collided with the hoop. Now that's obviously... And he's the, not been able to. Obviously fatal <laughs> in the sense that Pierre is almost bound to run this hoop and take the lead. Or take more of a lead. Jack's going to tell us... It's an angled shot. Right. But Pierre is through hoop four. And so far, he has four hoops in the second game. He's, what is he now? He's, is he, no, three one up. Oh, sorry, three, three, one, one. three yeah. one. I didn't see the clip on the first one. Three one. Yeah, Pierre's playing in the World Championships for the umpteenth time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think he has had an advantage of playing majority of his croquet in England 
and the Belgians have not had as much croquet, so it gives him a, a very good position <laughs> to be selected for Belgium. Well, he is indeed, because of course he's the only he's the only Belgian around, number one in Belgium. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, well, we've been explaining that the yellow ball has been played in by Thomas to hoop five, and that was followed by a blue ball by Pierre, making a close position on hoop five. Now the red ball by Thomas will be attempting, I think, to clear. No, he's taking position. I thought he might be trying to clear. That's a, that's a good shot. It, particularly, yeah. I don't think he's blocked black getting to yellow. That's the possible disadvantage he's got because Pierre's only got about a seven yarder and he's very capable of getting most of those. He is. He's not got the desired effect. He'd hit the ball, but he, he feathered it, and it's gone a little bit further away from the hoop, but it's still in a, a very useful position for Thomas. Right, they're playing quite quickly, so it doesn't give me a chance to tell you all about uh, Pierre Beaudry, who happens to be my doubles partner. It's a possibly a double for Thomas. He could clear blue and he could get the hoop, I think. But uh, so if he doesn't get one, the other one was what he was shooting for. <laughs> oh, he's oh, very unlucky. He hit was... blue and it collided with the hoop. And then <laughs> his only hope is that blue might not see red. Mm. Can't. Then Pierre. Pierre doesn't seem to be. No, I think Pierre. Much, I think Pierre can see red. We can't obviously see the line. Oh. No, he's he's removed yellow and blocked red. That's, uh, we couldn't quite see well, that the. That was an interesting choice. Well, it, it probably made sense if we were out there seeing the angles, John. <laughs> yeah, I think that might be right. But it's uh, this is I assume. Well, you can't. We can't see the angles. That's true. But this should be a jump shot, shouldn't it? Um, it's an either or. You, that's how confident you are with your jump shots. Yeah. You could clear it. Uh, bear in mind, black's a long way away. If you sort of quarter ball it and clear it, it's a possibility. Or you may be adventurous and go for the jump shot. Yeah, it's it, it, this is the. Uh... I've not seen Thomas's jump attempts yet, so. No, well, this is, our, this, to... is this is the first jump shot we've had in yeah. our broadcast. If it's going to do it. I don't think so. I don't know. That's how his stance would be quite right. No. no, it was the quarter ball clearance that we mentioned. And he sent blue well down towards hoop six. So it's obviously got to come back. But black will be playing in first. And that is on the west boundary at the moment. There's always, whenever the player gets over the ball, there are usually at least two options that are available. And of course, some are better than others. And it also depends on the strengths of the players, I think, with the choices they make. But then again, they're all strong in every department mm. at this level because uh, they've played a lot. Although I have to say, Thomas only started playing in 2014, which is a relative newcomer. Pierre's just wandered away. I think he, Thomas may have signalled that he preferred him not to be standing in a straight line where he was sending the ball. <laughs> that I would be fair. I didn't actually see the signal, but I, the fact he's wandered away suggests that to me. Now then. I think he's, yellow's been played in, probably hidden from blue. Although we can't confirm that line from here. It suggests to me it is. So yes, Pierre's just played back to a reasonable approach to hoop five. I think he was hoping to clip the edge of yellow there. He just slid past. Well, he's going to have a long shot if, he, if uh, Thomas can clear. Uh, Thomas would be going for black here, don't he's you, black. John? Oh, well. 
certainly. I mean, uh, if he doesn't, it'll be <laughs> it'll be curtains, but. Yep. And he's done a nice. And Unfortunately, <laughs> he rolled through and moved the red from this, the in, into maneuvered the red into the yellow, which has lessened its opportunity. Although it's still possible, I think, to run the hoop at that angle. Yeah. But I think uh, the safer shot will be clear blue and leave it to red. But that, of course, could all be changed when black comes right in front of the hoop. It hasn't done, but it's probably made the decision. I think that Thomas will be. Clearing blue, so he's certainly standing at in that line. I think he's got blue as far away as possible, and hoping to get a shot at hoop with red. It's moving away. He's probably about nine yards from red, or at least. Oh, it's a bit more than that. I didn't realize where it crossed the boundary. Now he's, he's got a little more than that, probably 12 yards. Looks like, it looks far too long for me, I have <laughs> to tell you. Well, you have to have a go, don't you? If you're... No, he's no, gone for he's position. Not, yeah, gone surprisingly, position. it's gone for position. That's, hey, it's, he's done pretty well. Yeah, but now... I don't think it's blocked, though. I think Thomas will be tempted with a hoop shot here. Oh, absolutely, yeah. I mean, the thing about this tactically is what you have to judge when you're playing is what you think your opponent can do and what he can't do. And, uh, and of course, Pierre is hoping you won't hit this one. And, and he was lucky. Right. He hit the hoop but bounced away. Yeah, well, he's been playing against him for the last hour and a half. Yeah. So and knows what he can do. It's also. Very useful, I think Pierre is very good at mixing his game up, so you can't really read him, what he's going to do next. He'll play some long clearances and then, unexpectedly, he'll play a position. Pierre has jaws the black ball. Yeah, I think um, he was hoping to get through there. Personally, I would have said he'd be quite content with Yeah, well, I think you're right. Um, because this is... Yeah, because uh, Nick, what will happen now is that yellow can't knock him out of there except through and blue can clear red to the far yeah. boundary so yes he's and now of course in the in the jaws he's got the i think if he was to choose to clear blue i don't know whether he could get black out with red yeah it's it's un un unless he can yes yeah, it's, it's unlikely he's obviously pondering uh, on this. i think he's personally i think he's considering a jump shot but let's see if i'm proved right or wrong i wondered about that too but that's quite a long way away it is I was overhearing a conversation about the uh, optimum distance for a jump shot from an Egyptian player. No, it was well, a clearance it was on the blue. blue. Well, at least he's put the ball in the yellow ball is coming towards us in very close the corner but it's not quite, going to be offside quite, quite close to our commentary position now then. so he must think he might be able to get black out um, you yep. can't really see how far into the jaws it is from here so he, he, i think he's gonna have to skim across the front and hope it knocks it out yeah difficult one he well, has he's done. done it well. He's knocked it, it well, well back to it within a yard of the less than a yard of the the boundary, but actually back to the boundary. Yeah. So he's uh, that, uh, Pierre will just approach, and he has already done that. Didn't need long to think about that one, Pierre. <laughs> <laughs> well, he doesn't spend a lot of time thinking about things anyway. But uh, he's a very instinctive player mm. and a very good player. He's, his first uh, World Championships, it tells me, uh, was in 2006. Um, oh, again, yeah. he's standing in line. Oh, very... Oh, 
Ah, uh, that's Just hard luck. A good strong shot went through between both of Pierre's balls and the hoop to end oh. up on the south boundary. I wonder this... whether people saw on that shot to what we could see very clearly, which was a trail of sand being brought up by the balls. I've been told they, they put sand down about three days ago, was it? I think it was done on the Friday before the championship started, I've been told. Which the... Now that, that shot by Pierre isn't the best. No. <laughs> it's well in the hoop, but he's in the wrong place. Yeah. Um, never mind, never mind. Yes, Pierre, of course, has the advantage of being Belgian because it means he can enter all of the world championships <laughs> without anybody uh, opposing him, so to speak. Um, but nevertheless, he's well worth his place in this tournament. Yes. And um, he's been one of the leading Dulwich players for a number of years. I this is on. true. Yes, this is why I keep mentioning yes, because uh, I was not, I was a player for, at Dulwich for many years, but of course not one of the leading ones. Simon Carter being another very good. Oh, no, it's just a, a long shot there by Pierre. Ambitious. Straight to the north boundary. He hasn't really got much of a shot with his blue ball. He's, he's eyeing up what might happen. I, so I'm thinking he's probably going to be playing a shot to the side when it comes to it. But yellow's coming in first from the south boundary. Very impatient. Pierre's already on the ball. As soon as the yellow stopped moving, yeah. he's played it. Actually, almost instantaneously. There's no chance for the commentators to say anything about him, <laughs> which is probably deliberate on his part. He did warn us before we started commentary that perhaps this wasn't the most exciting game that we would see. This well, he did say that, but I think it's well. It's a good introduction to those of you who are first uh, first day. And Those of you on your second day will know that Pierre was actually commentating yesterday. It's also a, an introduction for us as a commentary, commentary pairing. I don't think we've ever worked together. No, we haven't. No, no. I know we played. We and played. You but I... <laughs> and a nice hope by Thomas there. Right, that puts the score to 4 2, I think. 4 2, we think. Right. Uh, now we have a potential offside situation, ah. and uh, I think Francis Coleman, one of their referees, is going to have to come and adjudicate here. Um, Thomas would like this checked as to whether the blue ball played by Pierre away from hoop five has yes. ended up in an offside position. Yeah, that's what he's saying, I think. Uh, yeah. Frances has just arrived at the spot and she will be giving an adjudication shortly. Oh, so now this is something that we all ought to, to look get at. down on hands and knees and do the line of sight. <laughs> I had to do one the other day, John, when I was refereeing. <laughs> well, that's a good. That's one of the reasons I'm not a referee. Yeah, I think she's called that as not she, offside because um, the whole was it the, the whole the, the whole must, of the ball must be over the offside over the, line, offside. Over, the, over the line between the the pegs at each end. Right. It must be the whole of the ball. It's yeah. not. Okay. Don't don't worry. I'm sure there's an expert. Oh. We just, uh, you just were told not to worry by the uh, famous Mr. Stephen Mulliner. But, uh, this was a conversation that wasn't involved in our game. <laughs> well, we've had, we've had complaints about extraneous comments from passing uh, yeah. players, but uh, always nice to see Stephen bustling around the place, as he was this morning when, of course, some of you were watching him play. That's gone a little bit short by Thomas, but I mean... And now the blue ball comes in, take a almost perfect position, but he's not quite wired. But he, uh, I think Thomas needs to get rid of the black ball because that can also run the hoop. And black will be following red, so that's his main priority. 
Oh, the applause is from another law. I don't know if we can see who's playing over there. But, uh, I think we better concentrate, concentrate on what, on we're, what one, we're watching, yes. John. Yeah. That's it. So, nice clearance nice by clear. Thomas, but into a position where now there's a potential for Pierre to try a hoop run if he can't see the yellow, or he could take another position. There's three yeah. options there. Well, that's and right. We're well, not least... putting money on which one he's going to go for, are we? <laughs> and we probably shouldn't be asking him at this stage. No, no, no. Now that he can see yellow. He can also obviously see the hoop, but he's at an angle yeah. and a long way away. He's opted for your third option. Yes, the second position. That's not necessarily sure. that good. <laughs> There's a possibility. That's he a could, cracker, he says. <laughs> could put the yellow in between them the and split them, the maybe. The problem is that this is a double clearance <laughs> coming up now. Or could be. The technique involved here is to hit between the two balls. Oh dear, that was good. <laughs> we have to be careful. We aren't allowed to give advice. John. No, no, we mustn't give advice. <laughs> not that there's advice would be any use. If we do, he's, ba he's bound not to accept it. I don't think if he overhears advice, he can act on it. Oh, can you? Yeah, I believe so. I believe that's the rule. Ah, oh, that's come out tolerably mm. well. But we shouldn't be giving advice, no. and we don't give advice. Oh, I wasn't giving advice, we were just making a yeah. casual and flippant observation. Commentator's license. <laughs> <laughs> right, Pierre's now going to... I don't know what it's going to do. What do I, you think mm, he's going to do? I think it's just going to be a hoop shot. Because he doesn't need to clear yellow yet. Well, you know, well, of course, Red's as he's well in front, I think it's worth. Uh, yeah. If he were behind, maybe the yellow. But uh, well, I, I read it right, but um, I'm afraid Pierre was unlucky and went. He missed. Passed on the left-hand side of the hoop. I think he might be rather distressed by the fact that he actually missed the hoop completely. Mm. But there we are. Now then, Thomas to clear black. Thomas is Thomas is taking a good on the, oh, he's patrolling on the east shot. boundary. He has about a five yard shot to uh, five, five and a half yard shot to uh, clear black, I would say, John, would you? Yeah, it's, um, they, we, pro we probably should point out um, almost all the boundary shots are played from inside the boundary. That's not usual, but it is at this level because mm. of the grass. They don't want to be standing yeah. on uneven grass and they're entitled to using the phrase take relief and uh, they quite often do and there are rules about taking relief should it be within six yards um the owner of the other ball can ask for that ball to be moved in the same amount yes but it hasn't happened and it rarely does most people don't no it's not ah. another placement well Oops. Yeah, that's I suppose that's... Well, it's certainly going to be extremely difficult for Pierre to clear both. So he's now removed a clip, which is uh, a certain signal that he's going for a jump shot. He is indeed. Now, so again, our first... <laughs> yeah, our first jump shot of the day. There have been many, of course, around the lawns. First one since the start of this commentary. Indeed. Oh, unless, it's, unless it's taking unless, a different view. Uh, well, I think the chances of clearing red with blue are probably lower than succeeding with the jump shot, personally, which would be his next option should he clear yellow with black. Yeah. Then. Oh, oh the jump was... shot hit the right hand wire and bounced away. Quite close, um, but not. So it's now yeah. nicely set up for Thomas. Who is and yeah? Who's, Which, who's worried a, about the fact an angle shot, but uh, is walking in his line of sight again. Well, within the scope of virtually all the players here. Yeah. Oh, well within the scope. But um, let's see. <clears throat> but having said that, we all get them wrong sometimes. Oh, indeed. Well, it is at an angle. I mean, he's got to make sure he doesn't hit that right hand one. We'll just be quiet while he takes the shot. Yep.
No. Not. Well, um, well I don't know, Richard, I can't explain that. I, but I don't think that was an attempt to deliberately block blue at red. I think it was just a... Well, I think it, well, it must have been. Or something. Why didn't he go for the... I, don't I, know. I, I, I think he <clears throat> might have played, a, played into the jaws, hopefully, and it may have healed slightly. Well, it, it was perfectly it done, was not a very good idea in the no, event because no, Pierre can hit him from there and oh, just pressed it. I don't think that was a blocking attempt. I'm going to read that yeah, as a, old. a gentle one to the jaws, which held which, slightly. Which held, yes. This is a term that is used to blame the lawn Yeah, because there was a hill on it. Ooh. Now, Thomas is jaws Good effort. from the boundary of <coughs> red. And he's got it and, into the jaws, uh, which means that... Pierre, Pierre is going to have difficulty getting it out with black. It, yeah, I think he can see a little bit through the hoop. It's going to be an extremely precise shot to succeed. Yeah. Very precise. I think this is probably not going to work. Ooh. He's done it. But he's only got it out about that four feet, maybe. That's about as well as it could yeah. be achieved, and that provoked a ripple of applause from uh, some of the people in the audience, one of whom is a close friend of Pierre's, I think. Yes. <laughs> yes, you'll be talking about Simon, of course. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Simon Carter, who uh, sponsors this sort of operation, and Pierre... Uh, Fellow players started mm. playing together, played at the same club, and still do. Now, what's Pierre going to do? Has he, I think he's got line of sight direct at hoop, and I suspect that's what he'll be doing. Two balls down here. Ready, Tim. Oh, again, he's bounced off the Sharp wire. Sharp intake of breath. I did manage to call the shot correctly, but yeah. unfortunately it wasn't executed for Pierre. Now, we've had our first jump shot. We weren't going for the same hoop. We're going well, he hasn't one. taken the clip off, so I'm, I'm inclined to think he has a line on the other side of blue, yes. John. Yep, you might be right. Difficult to tell from this angle, especially with my eyesight. Here he goes. Oops. Moment of indecision. <laughs> Oh, good shot. Good shot. Didn't go down the law as he would have wished, but he's through the hoop. Now then, getting closer. Yep. Yeah, has made he's quite a good approach. But not no, entirely of, happy with that. No, it's a little bit, flex of the knees gave it away. A little bit angled, but um, still a very useful position. <laughs> He nods his agreement. <laughs> ah, getting his excuses in early. <laughs> He's been bitten on the arm. John knows him too well. <laughs> <coughs>
I have a feeling he's might going to be trying something quite clever here, but I'm not sure. No, I'm not sure. Is he attempting to clear the black? Hmm. Or run the hoop? That would be very ambitious, wouldn't it? Oh, a little bit of false start there. Ah, oh. so that didn't... I was, yeah. try, I was trying to hit red. Trying to see. promote red down. Trying it's, to um, promote red. Yeah, has been right. drawn to been drawn to attention by one of the players. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> I did say he was trying something clever, yeah. and that's what I meant. Yeah. But it was hmm. well, obviously, it was ambitious because it didn't work. But, uh, there we go. He's now in a very difficult position. Oh, with well, two is, balls. He's having yeah. to do a what, what I would just. Oh, oh dear. That's... I would have called that a uh, association type shot, which yeah. I'm not very familiar with. John possibly knows. Oh, that's a bevel. That I would have faulted if I'd been out there refereeing because I considered that to be a bevel edge. I think you're right. And it was in a hampered position but, um, and therefore should go back. Although I am one of the tournament referees, I'm not on duty today. But, um, well, he should have called that himself, I suppose. He should, yes, he should have done. It was definitely a beveled edge. He hasn't gained a lot out of it, but oh uh, dear, Pierre's not um, not got that one, and that's uh, hmm. a sadness. I was conscious when uh, watching yesterday that there is a certain amount of jargon that's used by croquet players. I'm trying to avoid it. <laughs> They talk about lagging up. Well, yes. Certainly uh, Deborah Lyons Ney Cornelius did yesterday. Yes. Yeah. Um, it's not a term I, I, I really favour, actually. I believe Stephen used it when in a situation when I was refereeing yesterday, and uh, he said, I'm just going to lag up behind the, oh, the other right. ball. Well, then, if, that, if, if the master himself uses yeah. it. Yeah. Anyway. It certainly was used yesterday in one instance when I was acting as a referee. I believe it was Stephen, but... Uh, well, it was used. De Debbie Lyons knows has been playing croquet a long time, and uh, she must be obeyed. <laughs> well, Pierre, as they say, or was say, or was uh, was being said this morning, is in control of this hoop. Most definitely. <laughs> Thomas, having played a shot which he got away with because the referee wasn't called to watch um is now still some way from the hoop um yeah. i would suggest about 15 yards he's trying to try and get down between the blue and the black he's got the black out of the way that's not bad not bad at all again a ripple of applause from the assembled company but a very quick response from pierre before we even had time to suggest what he might be going to do and what i think he tried to do and he may have succeeded but again we can't see the angles is to block yeah the yellow ball and make it, sure it, it can't clear from the here ball. it looks very promising but possibly when, from our camera positions above you'll get a different view we've got one, hopefully a better view we've got one on the north boundary and we've got one on the roof of the hut we're sitting outside that would be the one that would possibly Give you a better view of this situation. Ah, he obviously yeah. didn't, and uh, Thomas oh. just made a good clearance on blue and uh, didn't block the shot. Well, obviously, blue will be. Yeah, we'll just come back in. Go back, yes, but uh, taking position. He isn't in front quite of, so much in control. In front no. of hoop eight. No, he's not as in control as he was, but he's still, well, he's overrun somewhat. That's not ideal. No. Um, he's, as was indicated by the swing of the leg. Yeah. John knows Pierre so well, he can read all his mannerisms. And, <laughs> and Well, uh, I did indicate that he and Simon Carter were in the same club. And I was, of course, also in that club. Yeah, yeah. And indeed, I still am. Though I've moved away. My background is within, mainly within the Sussex County Club here. And uh, we have 
unfortunately only managed to get one representative into these world championships and and that was dominic nuns oh, yeah. although there was seven of us went to eastbourne <laughs> for the qualifier and i ended up as first reserve well this is what i mean by you see when pierre being a belgian has a certain advantage yeah well helena jansen of course has a similar thing with finland yes indeed But that's not to demean them, because no, no. I think Pierre would pretty well get in yeah. if he were English or not Belgian. I think the, uh, the one perhaps who has benefited from this allocation of places to all countries is Morgan Weaver, the uh, Norwegian from Australia, <laughs> who tells me yesterday that his ranking is around 1,400. <laughs> oh. The what lowest in the, in the event. Oh, in, yeah. Well, I mean, he's below me. <laughs> and me. <laughs> but he's doing his part and flying the flag for Norway. Good. Very good. He readily admits he's happy to score a couple of hoops a game rather than a couple of games. <laughs> Anything better than that is a major success for Morgan. Morton, sorry, it's Morton Weaver. I'm making oh, him up with oh, my yeah. my doubles partner, Morgan Case. Oh, who's well, a yeah, he's a better player. Oh, oh, a nice oh, clearance a by clearance. Yes, well done. Very nice clearance by Thomas. Well done indeed. Well, he's putting up a fight here. And uh, crowds are packing in. And with a chair. Well, if he could get this, he. It's uh Is this a promotion? Yeah. If he it could get if, if he could get this, it's beautifully done. It's not I looking very so likely. But should he provoke get... a round of applause from Jack? Good. Second. Round of applause. Yeah. Yes. Really Jack yeah. is our assistant in all this. It shouldn't be, but he. <laughs> yeah. Jack, being a youngster, is in control of all the electrical stuff. Yes. And um, us old timers are sitting out here making. <laughs> verbal control <laughs> contributions knows, and he knows more about the game than both of us put together yeah jack's jack's risen very quickly up the ranks of the english players very impressive the annoying thing is when i play jack there's a 60 year age difference yeah. <laughs> right, well that, that promoted black has blocked the home doesn't completely, yeah but he's now going to have to try and clear it he's going to try and go be a good shot to clear it he it has it yes is. very good shot this is a very uh closely he's, contested game he, he, suddenly watching. after pierre getting a good lead if thomas was able to get this they'd be all square at four each they would but oh, you, you get the feeling that pierre is still in control well I think he pulled out the stops there, didn't he? I mean, he just dropped yeah. that one straight in front. His major strength over the years has been his clearances. I mean, he can hit things from miles yes, away. Yes, I, I've played him many times. I've had one or two wins against him, but he's certainly beaten me more times than I've beaten him. Although, funnily enough, we've had a bit of success when playing doubles against him in the Southeast Federation League. Um, because he right. had a variety of different partners and uh, yeah well that's what he wasn't playing with me of course yeah. <laughs> well he, he... Oh, oh that would be a miss yes that was an not attempt to clear been. blue now not, not pierre will have two balls in front of the hoop yeah, he's, he's okay. could regain control. I suppose yeah. the, the key to that is that he can now block. I think he'll be he's making sure he's wired from from some red in a, well, in a position where red can't clear both balls. I think. Oh, well, he's, he's gone. No, he's gone from, from wiring insurance, yellow to the hoop. But insurance policy. Yeah. In case he gets. It, it's pretty much impossible to for red to clear the black and the blue. Be extremely lucky to get away with that i think even jack would probably agree with that <laughs> uh, I can't really see. 
I say, we, we don't have we much put, hope of red clearing both of those balls. We put, we put, our, we put no. our, our junior partner in the hut. People will know that it, if they were listening to the commentary yesterday, it gets quite hot in there. Yeah. So we're sitting out in the breezy... In the fresh air. Fresh we, air. We put yeah. Jack in the microwave. <laughs> Oops. Well, I think there was a chance of it over there. I can't I think there was a chance of it over there. Well, it, it, yeah, it's difficult. I know you, well, you would know, but it's difficult from the angles to see what he's got. No, well, he's gone through the gap. gap. <laughs> there was a chance. Yes. Yeah. It, it was, a, yeah, anyway. Now I think the control of the hoop will we'll finally, finally we'll... come to fruition yeah pierre has been in control of this hoop although the since the first ball went down there his yeah. but it's been, been some yeah he was in control of that hoop for a long time but, <laughs> but yeah thomas was able to that do enough takes it to five three does it jack yes yeah. five three and we're approaching hoop nine with yellow to play first hoop nine is over in the southeast of the lawn. I think Thomas has possibly not quite got as far as he would have liked there. No. Don't think he's got yeah, has. hasn't gone deep enough or far enough. Well now. Oops. That's a, that's better. Oh, oh yes, that is, that is quite nice. But he hasn't. I don't think he's got red into a running position. But he's moved yellow to a that useful position. If he, if he has, it was an extraordinarily good shot. Yeah, I think that's element of good fortune, perhaps. Yeah. From here, I, I doubt if red's in a running position, but it's yellow no, to use. He needs to. Yeah, yellow. we'll be we'll be going for yellow. I'm pretty sure here. Yeah. But he is. Uh, 14 yards away. Missed and he's it. missed. Well, I think oh, that looks more than 14 yards to me. <laughs> but, well, I was thinking the two, the two right. sevens between, yeah, yeah, between no, hoops. Right. Yeah. But um, he was fairly much in this hoop, and that's a little bit this side. I mean, I'd how be, many of those? Yeah, 14, 15. I wouldn't have said it was that much more. I think the top players do expect to hit if they're within 20 yards. More often. Well, mm. not all the time, obviously not. No. But, uh, well, as I was told by one of our leading players in the last couple of years, the longer and straighter you can hit, the more likely you are to win. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. That's a, a good clearance by Thomas because he's gone towards the boundary with potentially still a running position to hoop eight. And Pierre's gone to the southeast corner, has got to play back in. Which he does with the usual casual yep. approach. Thomas is just going to go in front of Blue. Gentle shot here. Which will, of course, attempt the uh, which black will... ball to clear red. <laughs> which, yeah. Again, we're talking seven yards here, aren't we, John? I think, I think so. Yeah. And it's... Um... It's well within his compass, but they don't always hit these. In case you were getting really <laughs> annoyed at home. He, he, could, they... he, he could get a fluke in off, of course, here. Oh. But it would be a bit of a fluke. I don't think he could ever play for it. Oh, He's well, missed he missed it completely. It. Yeah. Not Perhaps he sure was why. going for the in off, which would have been quite a fine cut. Mm. And uh, well, he was thinking of the possibility, and it made him miss altogether oh, now now you see he's, he's got to make sure in taking relief that he doesn't yeah. give himself now an Pierre can advantage. ask for the same relief to be taken on the blue ball should he wish because it's within six yards of the target ball he's given him the option no Pierre's waved it away he's he's not going to take the option of taking relief on the on the blue ball but Thomas did offer it 
It is at the discretion of the owner of the ball in question. Oh, another hesitation. Uh, what did he... No, oh, um, again, it was offered because he's taken a little more relief, but Pierre's waved it away. He's he's not interested in his ball being advanced forward. Oh, he's cleared uh, both balls, unfortunately. I'll tell you a little bit more about the, that option that you have, if the ball is within six yards, it's going to be cleared. But what? Um, so he's pe peeled. He's peeled the the red through. Peeled the red through. Yeah. So the score is now. No, <laughs> Jack wasn't watching. Five four. Five four. We think yes. Now the if uh, the owner of a ball within six yards of the shot decides to take ask for the same amount of relief as the ball being played yeah you you put a marker down where the ball was you take the relief Oof. and then if the ball isn't moved it goes back to where the marker was if the ball is moved that's the end of it so here they go again this uh, there's been some interesting play i hope for those yeah watching in new zealand or australia or america we told that uh, all over the world not sure about new zealand and australia what time of day would they be out there oh John? well no <laughs> you're asking me i don't know but i say 11 about or 12 hours <laughs> about the same time as us isn't it i mean you're you're 24 hours away anyway here comes thomas with his yellow ball and pierre I would have said that about 12 hours, surely. Well, no. Halfway around the world. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're probably right. Just phone in and tell us. Yes. Yeah. I'm pretty sure somewhere in the region, 10 hours Australia, 11 to 12 hours New Zealand. Having once been to Australia. That's uh, uh -huh. <laughs> Not a place I found very easy to play croquet. Far too hot for me. Far too hot in the summer for most things. Anyway, sorry to sorry to offend Australians, but you know how hot it is in Sydney in the summer. Nice people, but not Ooh. sure about their climate. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> now then. Oh, oh Pierre, no! What have you done? Pierre what have you unlucky. done? Mind you, oh. he may be fortunate in the sense that the yellow ball cannot see black. I'm not sure. I, I think, think I think he can. I think the way Thomas is lining up, he can see black. It is wired. Jack tells me it's wired. So uh, well, you're looking. You can see it on the screen as well. Yeah, which is good. Doctors, so, when you you've got a better view. Thank you, Jack. Commentators are not given the same advantages so well, we could take advantage of the monitor gonna, but we're taking gonna play just to gently outside. through through the hoop i guess here which yeah, is what he's it. done it's a perfect position what he could expect to achieve there and this is going to entice a jump shot i think oh no it's not it's going to no. be no, no of course it'd be the, the blue ball going first i think pierre thinks he might clip can the edge see, of the can yellow see this one jack can he clip the edge of the yellow jack uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's obviously planning to clip the edge of the yellow. Yeah, we've got our director of communication has just appeared, <laughs> which which he's done perfectly. Nudged yellow out of contention with the next shot. He's getting all sorts of reaction from New Zealand. There's some sign language being conducted right we have a some might think was a little dubious thomas but, uh, with a playing the red in from some distance out it's obviously going to try and clear black i would suggest probably be a good move oh 
ball. And he's, unfortunately, See, they don't always hit, even from no. 12 yards. Yeah. So, now, yard and a half to two yards, yard and a half, I should think. That's a bit of an angle, but well within his capabilities. 99%. But uh -oh. Pierre was off, distracted so, by movement again. And it was the manager, no less. Yeah, and mm. he was some distance away, but it seems that Pierre is particularly perceptive of movement to the side of him. And he's run it nice. He's done that, so it's now 6 4. Yep. Can't find a clip to put on the top of the hoop. Should mention that for those who normally expect to see signals made to scorers, we haven't got enough volunteers for scorers we're all working on the live streaming and um therefore they're using the conventional uh, british way of doing it which is to put a peg on the hoop top of the hoop to signify that you won it hopefully there will be scorers at the later stages of the in the knockout yes um, well, I, I think that's um for, for block games it hasn't been possible yeah we perhaps should emphasise that the number of volunteers required for such an enterprise as this, with 64 players coming from all around the world, 11 lawns, catering, is quite substantial. And uh, congratulations to the uh, Sussex County Club for having done it for the second time in four years, which is... Looks to me as though I think he's 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 trying to clear black to the far side of the lawn, I believe, but he's missed. He missed it, but it, that was an attempt to uh, put black over somewhere where red ended up. Yes, um, and now of well, course, now we reassess the situation because yeah. Pierre will now t endeavour to clear yellow. Yeah. No, well, no, he didn't. He did. He only wanted a gentle clearance there, yeah, I think, John. Well, yeah, it's true, yeah, yeah, because, of course, yeah, blue is well placed. And uh, sometimes you, you lose your accuracy when you go that little bit harder. Indeed. Really? <laughs> <laughs> The clearance yes, by so there's a lot of analysis this morning as to the amount of distance you could get between it because of course you can only get small distance if you're heading towards a boundary but pierre has put himself back in control once again pierre seems to be maintaining control as he did with hoop eight earlier he's now creating that situation on hoop 11. Now Thomas is contemplating whether to position. He has possibilities of yellow getting to blue in a later shot, so he might well be positioning with red. Let's see. So I think he's having thoughts about it. Mm. Let's keep our voice down yeah, because he's not near to us. Yes, it was the positional shot that he went for. You're right, Trish. It's a bit like those computer, those um, commentaries on the uh, World Championships from the Crucible. Mm. Yeah. Fifteen times yeah. World Champion. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was a, oh, that's not not quite what he wanted. No, I don't think that could require could require a referee at a late and when. The red is, or the blue is played. If he can get rid of, well, the he, black I mean, he just put the blue in a horrible position, didn't yeah. he? I mean, he nudged the blue in front of the red, but there's no. Is he going to get rid of the the black? Was he going to try and get rid of the blue? Danger of getting rid of the blue. He can easily move the red as well. Wait for it. Yes, yes, yes. Now he went for the black, which I think was the safer shot. Yeah. This is an extremely 
difficult shot. <coughs> well, this yeah, is uh, this requires all sorts of it could mean maneuverings a, here. Calling for referee, but he's playing in such a way that I don't think a referee yeah. will be called by either player. I think the way he's playing yeah, is quite angles. safe. He's put it extremely close to red, but not touching. No, he suggests. I think they're all suffering from insect attack here in this sultry southern mm. English resort. <laughs> It's amazing how many people within a few miles of our club here and don't realise it exists for many years. Quite well, it's a, it's a little bit of a backwater, I have to say, isn't yeah. it, Southwick? I mean, well, no, I mean, we've got the, the harbour just out there. And ah, so. well, Shoreham Harbour, just over behind the trees. Yeah. Picture for yourself a little harbour with fishing boats and jetties and things and then take that picture completely out of your mind because it doesn't look like that at all <laughs> for those of you in new zealand picture i think it's hastings isn't it that's the most similar um hastings, i can never remember yeah. whether it's hastings or napier but anyway it's a modern small industrial port mm. And if you have a souvenir program, you can see the picture of it. Lots of cars and the sheds. And we're waiting now for something to happen with these two balls in a rather awkward spot. Thomas is making a lot of time to think this one out. And I'm still thinking a referee may be called, depending on the shot he decides to play. If he's playing the shot he's lining up for now, I don't think a referee will be called. He's just playing away, isn't he? Playing away from, yeah. That's yeah, remarkable. Well, we've just been invaded by a ball from another court. Hit to ah. us by uh, Mr. 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 Bamford is Mr. trying to aim balls at the commentators. <laughs> Obviously trying to put us out of action here. Sorry, gentlemen. He smiles and apologizes. <laughs> we, we just had a nice apology from him. Oh. oh dear that was an uh, unfortunate miss is this Thomas? terminal it wasn't wasn't really that close to the blue ball at that range so this could be the final shot from, of the game from pierre the match the match the match indeed and, and so it is perfectly executed. and the players will shake hands in the traditional fashion no yeah. fist pumping these days. No, no. And no. <laughs> um, that's the end of the match. Pierre Baudry of Belgium defeats uh, the Latvian star of Latvia, Thomas Freimanis. I hope I pronounce his name somewhere close to reality. And the <laughs> broadcast of that match has ended, presumably, because our cameraman is seen now walking into the distance. But stay tuned if you are tuned, because we're going to have a switch of lawns to a match which is going to be, we're told, of considerable interest in that it involves the 15 times world, ch no it doesn't, not 15 times, but a very good player. <laughs> Since they haven't actually told us who it is, um, we're turning our attention briefly to the lawn which is just behind us which you can't see, but it has playing on it the England international Steve Leonard and the South African London-based South African uh, Reg Bamford. Now Jack's in charge of all the electrics over here and he'll be telling us what's happening. Well, what we could do in the meantime if we're still being heard somewhere, John, is give perhaps players that aren't so familiar with croquet. Um, yes, 
a, yeah, well, a brief if, description of the court layout. And, yeah. Uh, well, we, we've been rather assuming, and certainly this morning when um, the uh, commentary was very highly technical, for those of you who enjoy that sort of thing, but we also appreciate that there may be people watching who don't really know what's going on at all. And um, the, <laughs> the game is played widely, but not so many places is it played quite as well as it's being played here. But the layout of the court. Over to Richard. Right, well, uh, for those of you who perhaps have only played on garden croquet and uh, not so familiar with a full-size croquet lawn, a full-size croquet lawn is 28 yards by 35 yards. And the 28, it's, you always start a game of golf croquet in the southeast corner, um, which is corner four on a croquet lawn. Now the four colours of the primary balls are blue, red, black and yellow. And corner one has the blue flag in it. Corner two has the red, corner three the black and corner four has the yellow. Now golf croquet always starts in the southeast corner. How are we doing? And yeah, we're going okay. We're just giving some of our listeners a. How's that going? Well, look okay. Uh, we yeah. think we think that our, we have yeah. listeners, <laughs> even though we, we haven't got a camera <laughs> operator. This section is particularly uh, for the benefit of players who are not familiar with the full-size croquet lawns and perhaps mm. don't know a lot about it. Um, we're just giving a rough description that yeah, no matter the about the geographical yeah, situation, yeah, you always start yeah. from the southeast yeah, corner. It doesn't yeah, have yeah. any relation to the <laughs> compass position yeah, sure. because some lawns face yeah. one way okay. and some face another. Yeah. And you can switch them round. You can switch them round, which is very confusing. Uh, Especially um, if you're trying to play association croquet, okay, well, the route you go around is quite important. Well, as it is in golf, of course. But looking at lawns one, two, three here at Southwick, um, the north is relatively northerly to the compass. Good. <laughs> but should you move, should you move on to lawns uh, four, five, and six, you've turned it ninety degrees. Yes. So your north is exactly in, in I'm, I'm, I'm told that the game that we are going to be featuring. Uh, next up is well, between Hanad Rashad. I need Rashad. The camera somewhere. Uh, now, Hanad Rashad was, is an Egyptian. Uh, she was born in uh, Alexandria. Started playing croquet when she was about 14. And um, that was at the sporting club, the famous club in Egypt. Um, she won the over 50s GC World Championship in 2018. She's also had third place in the single open world Championship the first single open GC World Championship in Milan in 1995. Seventh place in the Women's World Championship in Egypt in uh, 2014. You can tell I'm reading this from a script. Um, and she won the Women's Singles Championship in Egypt in 1991 and 1992. She is, of course, now a Canadian. She's a very distinguished player. And she's going to be playing, I think Jack's going to tell me that she's going to be playing Jenny Clark. Yes. Well, now, this is another emigre, but um, Jenny Clark now represents New Zealand, although she is uh, very much from this country. Um, she's re retired now, as we're told in the uh, brochure that accompanies this wonderful event, um, but she's part of the New Zealand team which won the Open Shore Shield in 2016 and she, with her husband Chris, who many of you will have heard playing, uh, commentating, sorry, this morning, a very distinguished doubles partnership, the um, New Zealand Open doubles titles fall to them, I think, on a fairly regular basis. Well, they're so. over here and now, and welcome they are. And the, Jenny's playing. Chris isn't, I think, because of a back injury. But yeah. Chris, sure. I believe, only plays doubles these days. All right. I haven't seen him in a singles match for a long time. But um, I believe, if, was it Jenny Williams, her maiden name? I, I can't remember. I think that might well be. She might well be in a Williams. I, I believe she was a Mancunian originally, was she not? Uh, well, if she shares my origins, I'm 
pleased to hear it, but I, <laughs> I, I, I can't so. claim to know her because, of course, she's been in New Zealand for yeah. quite a long time. But they're going to play on Lawn 4. Lawn 4 is, as we speak, being prepared for play yeah. by uh, somebody with a hammer. and a that's, our, that's our tournament director, actually, Mr. Yeah. Tim King. <laughs> Dr. Tim King. Dr. Tim yeah, King. Not Dr. Mr. Tim I King. know that he's doctor. The only man who's played more GC ranking games than I have. Oh, right. <laughs> okay. But he's a, yeah, he's a long-time player. I mean, he's yeah. uh, but a distinguished player and a... Um, and a distinguished administrator who's taken on the role of organizing this tournament and directing this tournament should give a call out some people call it a shout out i don't know it's a bit modern for my taste but uh the um the management of these things is not entirely straightforward and it, they, they're all volunteers and they do a great job and the manager now he's in charge of the of the uh, location of the games the keeping of the scores the maintaining of order generally and that's mike town now mike town has been managing tournaments for many years now and he's pretty good at it in my view yes but um he's totally agree with you john he did a very effective job here in 2019 yeah and he he did he, i recently saw him managing the british open ac which was a couple of weeks ago at hellingham and he did that beautifully and uh He's lined up, I'm sure, to manage many <laughs> very probably more than he would like. To. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. I should, we should also point out he's a pretty good player as well. Yeah, yes, um, yeah. and he plays in tournaments, but he plays it, as a minus two GC player. And uh, I played him this year at uh, at Woking. And, uh, and I think he's, a, he's certainly a minus player, but I'm not sure how many minus. Uh, he um, He's into the minus category as an AC player. Uh, he's always been around scratch and won on that sort of thing. But we've, uh, we've got some, we've got an, are we getting an indication that perhaps the, uh, the match, which is going to be between these two distinguished lady players, women players female players whatever is acceptable i would i, I just saw the canadian play reg bamford last night and yes she was a very strong player um went for long hoops good clearances yes one of the strongest hitters amongst the lady players i've seen i think really yeah. yes well I'm, I'm making it obvious i've never seen her play but then again um I don't watch croquet in Canada or in Egypt, although occasionally in Egypt, and if you are a, a keen follower of croquet on YouTube, you can, of course, watch all sorts of dramatic things that go on in Egypt. Right. <laughs> Right, we've had our instructions. So We're taking a five-minute break. Goodbye for now, but we'll be back shortly.
Right. Where is it? Right, welcome back. Welcome back to Sussex County Croquet Club in Southwick in the wonderful county of Sussex and we are now preparing ourselves for a considerable contest and it is of course between two of the better lady players in the world and Hanan Rashad is in the white with the red trimmings and unsurprisingly because of her current location in New Zealand Jenny Clark is wearing black with white trimmings so they're just uh, going through one or two early stages and just getting funny hand signals from the director but actually she's not she's not signaling at me she's signaling at the camera crew the game at the moment is shall we say inconsequential because we're trying to get the kit organized um i can see the the uh the lead cameraman who's putting his thumb up in the air and is getting two thumbs up from the director the director i should tell you is mrs allison Morm, for whom this is not an easy time with a skeleton crew lots of games oh and a rather remarkable hoop shot has just been achieved the uh, <clears throat> distance was significant and the angle was a little tricky but it went through very very nicely that means i think that the score in this game which we're watching from rather a greater distance than we might have chosen but we're not supposed to move for the kit it is now one nil yes impressions of david coleman one nil <laughs> sorry i left you there for a few minutes john but you obviously got the game underway oh my yes, I did. well there was a certain amount of um of activity which was extraneous because a lot of signaling about cameras and um we do have some uh, retired professional people. I know that our cameraman, for example, spent many a happy hour when he was a universe. It, big camera, fine, small one off. Ah, that's, this is, this is, I've just been given a message. The, the small camera, which is, which is actually not visible to us because it's above our heads on a sort of gantry. And, what are we doing lazing around is the question from one of the referees we're not lazing around we'll invite you we invite you mrs coleman to come and speak but anyway she hasn't now jenny clark is oh missing Just from hoop quite two. a yeah. short distance we've got to reorientate ourselves here because the norma now watches at 90 degrees to the previous one it is so the north is now this boundary that we're facing north of the lawn um, I was just about to sing the praises of our cameraman, who's called Paul Brown, and has a long history of being a student cameraman at Leeds University, he tells me. That was about 50 years ago, so I think he can <laughs> claim to have amateur status. We had amateur status then because it was student television. Now Jenny's going to have another go at this hoop with the black. And this time she has made it. So... Our resident scorer, who is sitting behind us, tells us it's one one. 
Well, they're on hoop three anyway. I think I'm pretty confident it's one all. Okay, Richard now. Collins had to go home. He's really quite poorly. He's one of our referees. Well, we've lost a referee. We have. But we've still got the best one here. <laughs> I don't see a clip on Bang my microphone. <laughs> well, don't, we're, we're Jenny's. Yeah, we're on yeah, Jenny we're just... Clark, and um, I can't see a clip on hoop one. Actually, at the moment. No, I can't. Oh well, I saw the hoop run. It was very good. Hannon is that was ran it with yellow. Right. I'm wondering if she is actually using clips in that case. Well, she's got them in her pocket on a. Oh, yeah. she? All oh, right. I can't see one on one, but perhaps on. She's got orange What's clips. Her name? On. She... What's her name? Hannon. 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 Hannon Rashad. Playing the wrong ball. I cleared my own ball. What colours are? We're getting excuses here. <laughs> Where we should explain that we're actually sitting next to lawn five. Lawn, f but that's because well, that's where all the equipment is for this enterprise and lawn. We're watching a game on lawn four, but on lawn five we have a game between Steve Leonard, who is a very good English player, but is struggling from what he was saying, but he is actually playing the many times world champion Reg Bamford from South yes. Africa. And then Via shooting Plotnick. red at hoop three, Oof. and it bounced away. She does hit the ball pretty hard, yeah, but then I, that I, is that is the Egyptian way. I, I saw her last night playing, uh, and we were here to call the past nine last night. Really? Her game with, uh, I was refereeing at the time when uh, she was playing Reg Bamford. It's actually getting dark. I left it quarter past nine, and there were still two Egyptians playing on lawn seven. So I think we've got to give a shout out to all the officials and <laughs> hang around. I had a 12 and a half hour day yesterday, and uh, there's an awful lot of volunteers in working in all different functions here, without which these kind of events couldn't happen. Yeah, it's just finished. Well, win a win two nil for Regbert. If you're interested, and I hope you are, that Reg has, um, I think the word might be cleaned up, or the words might be cleaned up. Yeah, Steve Leonard for... Um, Steve. But it's uh, it's not no disgrace losing to Reg, I always think. I don't think Steve was very happy when he just walked past us and said, this is embarrassing. So uh, He did say that, yes. yeah. Anyway, we're back on hoop three on lawn four between the... Hard-hitting Egyptian, Canadian, formerly Egyptian, and the not-so-hard-hitting but very capable English woman. Thank you, New Zealand. <laughs> yes. English-born, now New Zealand resident. Is you. that right? Is that right? I mean, I hope that's right. I believe she is English-born. Not entirely sure. I thought Chris Clark was English, wasn't he? he oh, very much so, yes. I thought... Jenny was. Uh, but something shows happen. how little we know about this game. Um, yes. Well, she is uh, she's returning to croquet, really, after having had, I think, a two-year break. Um, she's now retired and is celebrating her uh, retirement, as many do, by returning to both AC and GC play. Um, she was a physicist and a sports sciences. Um, so she's got a, a long pedigree, as indeed has her opponent. And so mm. this is a battle of... Um, There's a, quite well, an angled, to, angled shot. Oh, is this, no, she is she trying this? to jaws this? I would, didn't expect she would run it. But. We've gone for, I think, for a jawsy, maybe just hiding from the, the blue ball. It's very difficult to tell from this range exactly what the shot intention was. No, blue, blue's just going to come deep to the north boundary here. By the look of it. No, well, well, deepish. No, yeah, mid midpoint. Yeah, for that, for mid those who, who try and play this game by going towards the hoop, it is often thought better not to go near the hoop because obviously if the nearer the hoop you are, 
the more the nearer you might be to your opponent's ball, which will make life very easy for them. Um, yes, this is the. I pause for that. Oh, nice, nice pause for, 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 for this is where the game gets its reputation for being vicious. Those of us who play the game are often faced with people who say, when you say you play croquet, oh, it's a vicious game. In fact, yeah. almost everybody says that. And the answer is that this one, this version of it is, in my view, because it involves whacking people for as far <laughs> as possible. And at this level, usually, it's at the other end of the court. And... Um, of course, the reputation of having to play from inside the bushes is, is <laughs> that's a myth. Are you talking about croquet on the vicar's lawn? <laughs> well, that's the, the origins of croquet. It was always said that the game was, had its advantage because you could knock the ball into the bushes and go with a female opponent unchaperoned to try and find it. <laughs> How long ago did you play this time? <laughs> now, that was, uh, that's, I'm t that's, I read the books, you see. Uh -huh. yeah. Not that, they not that they tell you anything that's really very accurate. Anyway, Jenny is playing again with black. Take another position with black. We can't actually see where yellow is because of the boundary boards. We can't actually see the location, but when Hanan gets in position, we will have a better idea. Look, so she's fairly straight on the hoop here, I think. Whether they are blocked by the blue and hoop runners blocked by blue and black, we're unsure of. That's done a nice clearance on the blue ball. She's well down. With the yellow. disadvantage, of course, is that she is now miles away with with yellow. If but Jenny then that's can get the way it goes. another good position with blue. She could have what's known as two on the hoop, and uh, only the red ball. In play, she's removed the red ball and that's done successfully. She's now got two lined up with the hoop, both blue and black. Hannah trying an angled hoop shot, do you think, John? Because she's got not a lot of chance of clearing it with this. Must other. be. What's which she's going for black, surely? Well, she's trying no, for the she's hoop. Going. Oh, now that was, very well, almost jaws. She's right in front of the hoop. That I mean, well, I know that the you know that. I think with they never cease to astonish us. These con players, considering where the yellow ball was going to have to play from, I think that was probably the the best shot to take there. Yeah? And mm. she's. Uh, and no, Jenny, I mean they do practice. I know running the hoops from the corners, which yeah. is. Shall we say that's yeah, a little Jenny's bit? cleared that nicely gone halfway down yeah. the lawn, which probably means that when yellow comes back, if Jenny has got a shot at hoop, I'm suspecting she will take the shot at hoop. Well, that seems a reasonable analysis. don't know that uh, Jenny's husband would necessarily agree with it, but then... No, probably not. <laughs> Um, he's a he's our star commentator, and uh, I, I have to tell you, I was feeling daunted, daunted I was, listening to him this morning, and his analysis is um, really very really impressive. I thought the safer option was not to listen to Chris and <laughs> come up fresh myself and see yeah, what happened. <laughs> not a bad idea. No, I was acting as his sort of uh, supporter this morning, but he doesn't need any help from me, that's for sure. That was a lovely hoop by Jay. Nice slip of so we did call that one right. She went from it from the boundary. Yep. And she got it. And it's 2 1. But she, running from the boundary is, you know, it's, it's fairly straightforward, isn't it? Oh. If your confidence is high. <laughs> now the Canadian's done a, a nice approach shot. Possibly gone. Just I think it's still in a running position, perhaps a little further down than she would have liked. Yeah, ran on a bit. Well, the sun is beating down on us, as always, these days. We know, uh, those of you who think that Great Britain is a 
northern country with um, a tendency towards wet. <laughs> I've just got it completely wrong. We are in, we're baked in tropical sunshine and have been for the last six weeks. This, of course, means that we're going to have a drought warning just immediately. Well, Southern Water have in place a hose pipe ban already in Hampshire and the other White, I believe, from this yes. week. Uh, this week. Well, it has week. been very dry, although I'm told that it was going to rain in my hometown this very day, but not mm. in the south. Mm. The south of England has been very dry and continues to be so. We can get it. We probably have a comment from the uh, from the from the championship referee. We are live. <laughs> We're live online. Ian Cobold, <laughs> say hello. Hello. <laughs> We're actually watching a game that's now quite in the far distance. Yes, but um. I think he's come over to get Richard another job to do. Well, I don't want another quarter past nine tonight, John. <laughs> <laughs> well, you never know. This could be... Well, if yeah, I swear, I by two... quarter past nine tonight, there won't be many people watching. There wasn't last night. No, there wouldn't have been, because there was a football match on last night. Well, that was all over. I had it on in the clubhouse. <laughs> oh, did they? Mm. Yes. It was very yeah. good. I knew there was For those of you who don't know, <laughs> England beat Germany in a European final. Two goals to one. Biggest triumph in this country since 1966. And I have to pause. Because the Biltonator, young Richard Bilton, has just played a shot at the hoop and missed. You hadn't got as far as mentioning the fact that it was the ladies team Oh, and not no. the name. Well, everybody knows that, don't they? <laughs> not I mean, these people. Not overseas, the people in possibly. New Zealand, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was the lionesses. They're calling themselves. Um, not that the men call themselves the lions, but um, that's rugby. The, mm. um, the 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 triumph was well supported, and they played really well. I watched it. It was very very good, even though the um, Odds seem stacked against them. Mm. Anyway, back to the croquet. We've got two balls threatening the hoop and two balls not threatening the hoop. And the one that Jenny's going to play is to try to clear, presumably, the red one. No, she's taking... Oh, I don't know what she's doing. It's pushed blue right up to the red ball. It seems to have worked from rather here. well. Yep. We can't see the gap between the ball here. It's no. We're just too far away. Perhaps we... Uh, ah, right. Richard is now going to improve on our position by getting out his binoculars. <laughs> <laughs> then I have to re remove my glasses, John, because uh, they don't work together too well. What have we got now? Well, now is it a complicated position? Oh, I've been given, I've been handed the institutional binoculars. Um, that also means I have to take my sunglasses off. Tell you what, though, I can give you a hint here. Every, every pair of binoculars works a great deal better if you take the covers off the lenses. Which that works with cameras as well, John. Yeah, I've now done it. Right, I... Oh. Appearance on black. It's black to come back. At the moment, we have blue ball sitting nicely in front of the hoop. Yellow ball a little to the side of the hoop. I can see it. Hoop four. I'm not sure whether that could go into the hoop uh -huh. from where it is or not. It's just too far away. Jenny's shooting at the yellow, I think. And, and she missed it. it. So this is this is probably terminal. But it's hoop. Yeah. It appears though she thinks she can get hoop. She's not shaping up to clear the, the blue, so she no, obviously a, thinks Well she... looking at it through my high powered naval binoculars. 
provided to me by somebody. Jack, I suspect. Um, oh, yes. To all. To all. The scores are level. My nice Spanish competitor just walked into my eye line grinning. Um, as Spanish competitors often do. Yes. Some of the overseas competitors um, don't appreciate the seriousness the, 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 of this sort of thing. Yeah. <laughs> now, the, we, the we need, ought to mention, to I mean, there it. will be people watching from in Spain, I hope, because Spain is, I think, I haven't got this done statistically, but the fastest growing venue for yeah. golf croquet in the world. I would agree with that, John, from what I've heard. I've been out Spanish twice place. to uh, yeah. play in Spain, and it is exceptionally good. The lawns are fine. The facilities in most of the clubs, well, I've only visited a few, but they're exceptional on golf courses. And the people are most welcoming, and they're getting better and better. So, do you hear that, Basilio? That's for you. <laughs> no, we should also mention, if you haven't heard, that they had a test match uh, against a strong England team, and they won. Yes. Which that is... Was it hurling them a few weeks ago. It was, indeed. Yeah. And uh, my friend Basilio was playing. Was he, I, I believe he was a team captain, wasn't he? Uh, I'm not sure about that, but I, the thing I wanted to talk about was the way that the when it's on Facebook, there's an automatic translation. So Bas Basilio Iglesias, perfectly good Spanish name, became Basil Church. <laughs> right, back to this game. I can hardly see it through my binoculars, but anyway. Jenny is coming up to the hoop rather nicely. And then has got the option of a hoop shot here. I think that's what she's going for. Well, it looks very comfortable, really, isn't it? Yes, yeah, she's going yellow through the hoop. She's already got bed well down the lawn, which is another incentive to go for that shot. Bed is, in fact, beyond hoop six, nearer the north boundary, but it's in a very good position to clear anything that uh, Jenny sends up. It's a bit of a bit of a sadness. Not to get it. She's now going to have to. Oh, well, Jenny's just laid up yeah. in front of it, or lagged up in lagged front up of it, you... or gone in front of it. I think you. I still think Hannah was very wise to try that yellow for hoop because of oh, the yeah. position of red. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah. it was a good, it was a good possible hoop, I guess. Uh, lots of activity um, <laughs> around the hoop, but uh, most of it not related to the game. All right, Jenny, the one. signal that you saw there was an instruction given by Jenny to her opponent to get off the lawn. <laughs> No, that's not true. You know what it is. If you know this game, it's yes. offside. Sent to the Despite penalty, her attempts to penalty put it area on the, on the west boundary. That's... She only glanced off the yellow and went well towards the north boundary with blue. But that hasn't really helped Jenny that much because... Uh, no. She and then can get both of her balls into good position from there. But Jenny's played a oh, oh she's come oh, on centre peg all, this time. All going horribly wrong. And it's comforting to see that at this level. Deflected to the the east east side of the lawn. And it looks as though she's trying a hoop shot with yellow. You can't really be sure of the angle, but yes, she's done it nicely. 
comfortable. That's three all. We just checked that with our scorer. Three all. Yeah, well, yeah it yeah. is. See, Jack has a considerable advantage of being very young, so he can remember the numbers. <laughs> Especially what you and want. the name, <laughs> yeah. I think it's the pronunciation of some of the well overseas okay. names that I struggle with, John. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, we ought to adopt the practice of doing everything phonetically. The pools are now in a quite a tight cluster at hoop seven, the yellow to play, nicely positioned, all of them. Yellow to play in and presumably remove the, the blue ball, I would suggest. Or all three of them. Now she's done your friend Basilio has said hello. Oh, right, good. Hello, Basilio. <laughs> I, I get a message through, you see, from my able assistant that um, you're Are you watching. A young technician, Jack. Yeah, a young technician. And he says, job. you say hello. Well, hello to you, Basilio. And I hope the family are well. We're watching, uh, uh, as you know, yeah. Jenny yeah. Clark playing in two... Very short as well. Yeah. Okay. Jenny attempting to hear the red ball. Oh. And she misses. That's oh, one of those shots where it goes straight between the two and you think it's impossible. This looks like an opportunity for no, Hannon is Oh. I thought she would go for hoop, but I, I think she's gonna do a stop shot clearance here. Right, yes, she's done a perfect stop shot there. Yes. And she's getting I mean, very good control of the hoop in doing so. There is there is a theory that says if you can see it, go for it, but uh, not always well, followed. And I, not always correct. I think uh, if the opponent's ball would have been left in a wired position behind the hoop and you were coming from a slight angle, that's the time to take the hoop. If it could go straight mm. down. But look, yeah. but look, look. Perfect clearance by See? Jenny. That's where it yeah. went wrong. It, it backfires, yes. You would sometimes then think, I should have taken the hoop. <laughs> well. I wasn't suggesting that the theory was necessarily right, but I rather thought in that situation she might well have run the hoop. Ah, oh, well, yes, and she's and taking... trying to re-establish control of hoop seven. Some success. Yeah, that gets a lot of power into those shots with the hands low. Just been distracted uh, um, by Richard Bilton a doing ripple a, of nice, applause a nice you'll jump here on your sound, probably on lawn one, and it's from lawn one, and it was Richard Bilton, a young man with a, quite a reputation, I playing a rather that, decent jump shot. That was hoop nine in their game, I think. Hmm. Not sure what happened there. Well, Jenny obviously didn't achieve the hoop because Hannah is now lining up to... Uh, well, she missed it, but I don't know why. Yeah. She was shooting from the boundary, but she obviously just went straight past. Oh, and yeah. Hannah has bounced off the wire and this gone is, well, um, well out to the, this... the east boundary of the lawn. <laughs> so it's I mean, fairly remarkable place to the, the ball to end up when you were actually, trying to yeah. run that hoop. Yeah. It's ended up about 30 yards, I think. Um, so Jenny has now positioned herself reasonably well. And this has got to go, hasn't it? Because yeah. yellow is probably not going to hit that. Yes, hoop seven has caused him quite a few difficulties so far. Well, she's tidied that up nicely, put the ball right in the corner. And now Jenny on the far end of the lawn. So our cameraman swings around. No, he doesn't actually. But the ball is approaching and is going to end up beautifully placed. Well, pretty well. 
yeah, from that distance, you've I'd got be, to think I'd that. I'd be very well. happy with that. Absolutely. I think Basilio would have been happy with that as well. <laughs> now then, sweaty palms time over there. Coming in from the east boundary. It's not bad. It's a good not position. All that. A very good position in front of the hoop. That's good. Which Jenny will go to clear straight away, I think, with the blue ball. But she missed. Right, but she missed. Wasn't clearance. Jenny's clearances are not quite as hard to be hit, hitting as no. Hannon's clearances, but uh, would have achieved a good result had she connected. Here comes another power shot, one suspects. The farther away black goes, the better. And it's gone quite a long way. It's headed back towards hoop five. And if it ends up in hoop no, five. No, I, I think it's stopped short of that, but it was in going that direction, wasn't it? So it doesn't look like an easy shot to me. No. no. We can't really see how far it is from hoop five here. So I think she's got well, plenty of room. She's got, yes. yeah, yeah, she's got plenty of room there. Like now, the come on, Jenny, through. let's see what you're made of here. Look at this. Oh, no, 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 it's missing by quite a long way. There's a couple of players yesterday I noticed in the backswing, their mallets go well off the line. They twist oh, yes. quite a bit. And, well, they always, yes. And Jenny is one of those players I've noticed. You know, if you could see a, he used to a, say that about Don Bradman, of course. Yeah. <laughs> right, here we go. This one should go through. Don't hit it so hard. You don't have to hit it. So it doesn't have to go to Brighton. <laughs> uh, done again. She's you see, a, I have to, the I power shot. Give, I, I might not be a very good player, but I'm quite capable of giving advice. <laughs> I've done that many times. If you hit them too hard, yeah, you don't. You have to get greedy. And it seems as though the majority of these players at this level Oops. seem to think you should clear a ball off the far end. Of well, the ball. I mean, I, yeah. And when you've run a hoop, you've been off the. I don't personally achieve that very often myself because I can't hit them that hard. <laughs> well, <laughs> there are different ways of playing this game, obviously, and uh, some of us prefer the gentle approach which is adopted by some of the best players but the top yeah. players the really top players can hit the ball very hard indeed and in egypt is it seems I think everybody hits it hard as well. the players who have played the majority of their croquet as ac tend to have a different approach to yeah. those pure yeah. gc players who tend to hit the ball much harder with a possible exception of simon carter who doesn't play ac Oh well, he, yeah, it's no, a he very controlled he, game. He does play a bit of AC, does but he? he is a he's a what he's a three handicap or something. But uh, yeah, no, he he's he is a gentle player, yeah, and uh, nonetheless effective for that. I mean, it, he remarkably, and I think it is remarkable, won won the All England handicap. Yes, he did. Yeah, which with a handicap of minus three, yeah, takes some doing. Yes, because, because the rest cost, of them are all bandits. Uh, sort of playing tens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ten handicap going on four, yes. Yeah, that's, that's the thing. trouble. But anyway, the less said about the all England handicap in this context, the better. This hoop is proving troublesome for both players in a sense, but uh, well, Hannon said they'll get there in the end. Very very possible attempts which yeah. she's hit so hard and been slightly out and on one occasion she ended up with the ball right over on the east boundary which we couldn't believe actually could be how she <laughs> that's, that's that was pretty extraordinary as they say with golf croquet expect the unexpected ah oh, do they oh. <laughs> now there we are 
Another perfectly placed ball, which will now be attacked from distance. Or is she going for the black and hoping to get in with yellow? I'm not sure now, I think it's blue. It was blue. Yes, well, it's a good shot, but it's red miles away. Jenny doing a much more controlled, gentle clearance yes. there. Well, I mean, just just to make sure that she couldn't run the hoop. Yeah. Um, there she was, and then. Well, she will now be sent right back into the corner. Which is pretty much what has happened. Well, I think she came off the lawn a little earlier than and then would have liked. She would have rather had her further to the corner than she's ended up, I think. She ran along the, the boundary ball some way after it came off the lawn. Yeah. So she's not in too bad a position there. Yeah, she's just got to go and exhaust herself. Yeah. Getting after the bullets. She gets a good position for blue. Almost and it's red. The, yeah. Red appears to be wired from blue, although it's not placed on the boundary yet. And black appears to be in quite a good position to clear yellow following that. So, so you're optimistic. I'm optimistic for blue at the moment. Oh. <laughs> Well, the Biltonator, young Richard. I'm not sure who won that. Has one. just completed the first a victory in his first game. Was it? Was it Richard who won? I think. Uh, by what? So seven, we're seven four. Sort of trying to commentate on one game and keeping half, other, half, half an eye on the other game. Yeah, well, it's very half. distracting. I know it's yeah. very distracting for the people watching as well, yeah. because you think, why aren't they telling us about the one that's on? We're watching. No, this is we can't see this the other. This is Jenny one. trying to. Get rid of the yellow ball with her black well down the lawn uh, oh no she had a disaster yellow ball riding with blue That's, and put it through the hoop no. did it go through she yeah. hasn't i don't think it did she hasn't gone up no, to clip no, it no, no I, I, it didn't uh, the way she walked away i don't think she was happy with it at all i think that was uh, we're being approached also by a serious player who's got a thing on his chest that says Chris Roberts 53, which must be his age. If only. If only, yes. 53rd player to play for Wales. Oh. 53rd player to play, to play for, for Wales. Wales. Yes. I thought perhaps he was going to say born in 53. <laughs> Good, afternoon. <laughs> yeah. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, yes, welcome. Just welcome be alongside to us, Chris. little uh, coterie. We're, as you can see, Chris, we're watching a game which is about 100 miles away. Right. And we're commentating on it very ineffectively because we can't really see what's happening. All we know is that they're on hoop seven and have been for about the last three hours. So that that's, an, that's an exaggeration. And this is Jenny and... And it's between Jerry and Hasha. Chris might be able to answer. Paul coming. Come here. Hanan, sorry, not Hasha. Something uh, Hanan, we were debating sorry. earlier. Yeah. Is Jenny originally English? Uh, we know Chris was. I don't know that oh, oh well i assumed it she, without knowing uh well she has oh, she's been in new zealand a long time yeah she has a a very new zealand accent yeah so true. i imagine I she, she must have been there as a child yeah, yeah. if not if not if, born if there. not or yeah. born there yeah but chris we know, came, know. comes from essex yeah we know well at least i think we know that Richard. and jenny i think plays for I think it's Lancashire or some, ah, well, some, somewhere up north in the, the counties. In the counties. So, she is, in fact, a Mancunian. That was ah. something I thought I'd heard okay. in the past. Well, that could be it. I, well, oh, I'm not sure oh, if I recall I think the hoop has been run. Oh, not sure. No, no. Oh, referee. Well, referee. Francis, Francis is going to be called Francis. on again. We've got, oh, don't know about that. Jenny, Jenny's convinced because she's played, played oh, forward she's to play. She's who bait. accepted that yeah. position. Mm. Well, it, mm. so what's the score? One, 
It is two, now. Three, Jack is on the score. It would have been four. scores on the door. Be four, three. If that's going through, it's four, three. Yeah. yeah. We think, well, if they think it's being conceded. <laughs> it could, yeah, it, it, on it, it could it give rise to a certain amount of difficulty. Right. So now having another Jenny look at comes it. back and finds it um, isn't in fact through. Yeah, she accepts yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. That loud crash was a player on lawn. Five. <laughs> Hitting the ball firmly. Not connected. Oh, not connected with his clearance. Red. Probably had a double down at uh, hoop eight where it could have got the hoop. All the blue clearance and actual fact went off the right wire. Right. Ah. Oh. We have also oh, no, I shouldn't keep saying what's happening on the other lawns because it's very distracting. I know, but we just had Stephen Mullen lying flat on his face, but that's not unusual. That's some other regularly regularly happens with him, right? <laughs> it isn't that he's fallen over; he just likes that sighting of the hoop. Yes, he's, he likes to get a bird, a, a worm's eye view, yeah. or indeed a bird's eye view, I suppose, if a bird is on the ground. Some of us don't jump up and down quite as quickly. Right, that does, hoop, uh, having taken 20 minutes or whatever it was over the last hoop, Jenny has just run that one to take the score for four. We think. We know. Well, I think I'll... So they head for hoop nine. Uneventful so far. Well, that's fairly efficient. We're bidding goodbye to Mr. Chris Roberts, sometime editor of the Croquet Gazette, professional photographer, and Welsh International. Been a few clearance exchanges at hoop nine. No one's in a decisive position at the moment. No, but uh, well, what was permission was being sought? Oh, I think was it something to do with? No, they were being gracious towards each other. As of it course might have befits been just a check on, player. on what was the play actually. It could have been a check on the. Oops, no, another, another escaping ball. Balls flying everywhere. And no warning notices at this club, I'm no, sir. But Lee Salterton has notices everywhere we, saying, beware of flying croquet balls. We are in an area which spectators are not really supposed oh, to be Oh, yeah, that's true. That's um, true. So we... See, we're not spectators. Or perhaps we are. I suppose we are considered to know enough about the game yes. to avoid them. This we're, situation. <laughs> we're obviously finding it difficult, or we were finding it difficult, to uh, keep our attention on, a, on an attempt to get Hoop 7, which lasted quite a long time. But now they're on Hoop 9, I think and uh, the score is 4 all. So if you're just joining us, you, you don't have to go straight away because... This could get quite interesting. Ah, now, see, there is a theory about this game, which is, I'm sure, accurate, that every time you play a shot, you must try and do two things. Yeah. It's not always easy to do, but I think Jenny just did it.
Yellow retain, returns to scoring very position. position. Very good position for yellow. Now blue to clear. Unless blue is obstructed by the black or the red, which we can't be certain of from here. In this case, it will clear red. Blue, black. I was just being attacked by an insect. No, it's been nicely clear. Very in mind, we are now in the tropics. That can be quite hazardous. <laughs> The new tropics. The new tropics, yes. South of England. Yeah, 40, point, 40 degrees, yeah. 40.3 oh, well, 40 degrees. That's only three degrees less than it was in Sydney when I was last there. And for those of you who are in Sydney now, well, it's the winter, so you're all right. Well, there's a man wishing to take out photographs. Well, I'm crawling in front of us I'm, here. I'm not quite sure camera. Where, where this is going to appear, but... <laughs> well, it'll be appearing on the uh, live streaming um, manual. I see. How to commentate on a... On a croquet match. On a croquet match, which is a 50 yards yeah, away. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think uh, there's an attempt for Black to run through the hoop, and it's just missed. It just failed. The wire on the right-hand side. So... Uh, Still very close to the hoop, and I don't know. And when I said 50 yards, I obviously meant 50 meters. Oh, well, Another debate. Yes. Well, fortunately, for us slightly older ones, John, yes. the primary units in the rules still mention imperial measurement first. Of course. With a conversion. But it does have a conversion. It does yes. have a conversion. Now, well, it is being debated, but of course you can't. You, I mean, you'd have to convert the yardage into meters, wouldn't you? Yeah. Because otherwise, all the clubs would have the the course, which were too small. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, being your history of croquet, croquet was played on two tennis courts, which yeah. is why the, the sides there. And I'm trying to run red Actually, through hoop nine. I correct. And again, she's done it with. Such force, and she's yeah. slightly off, and she's bounced away from the hoop. I should, of course, correct it because it's not that croquet was played on two tennis courts; it was that two tennis courts were played on a croquet lawn. It was that way round, right. people. Right. Croquet came first, and then got submerged regrettably. I do remember hearing that, uh, as I quoted once before, the size of a Full-size croquet court is 28 yards by 35, and a bowling green is 43 yards square. So you can only get one full-size croquet lawn on a bowling green. This is you wish to convert one. Well, uh, well, we do wish to convert them all the time. Yes. Now the the uh, the, the sport of bowls is um, still popular in this country, but less so yes. than it used to be. That means that there are quite a lot of very nice pieces of flat grass available for use for croquet. And I'm pleased to say that that's actually happening, preferably sharing. They're often owned by uh, various councils around. Yeah, the local yeah, yeah, well, it is, yes. And if you come from up north of England, as I do, you know that provision was made extensively for croquet for, well, it was not for croquet, but for bowls, whereas croquet provision was made in the south of England, I think, by councils. Although there are exceptions to all of these rules. Hmm. Those of you watching in Middlesbrough will know that there were croquet lawns in the Victorian Park, where they still are. Right, we're back to the, back to hoop nine, which are still contesting. There was uh, several exchanges and clearances, and uh, Annan had a powerful shot at it, which hit the wire and bounced away. The difficulty in assessing what the shot should be from this distance is not insignificant, and. She can get rid of the black. She can get rid of the in black in order to give yellow a good her partner good ball, the yellow, a considerable and advantage, and it's going very quite well. Very good. I mean, the yellow ball isn't wired from black, from what we can see from here, but it is a long way away. It is a long way away. I mean, we are looking at. Uh, I would Jenny, say Jenny is marching up to it with uh, 
What are we looking at there? It's sort of typical of 15, 18 yards. Quite a long fortitude. Yeah. Now you watch the backswing of Jerry's mallet when she does this, John, and you'll see what I'm yes, talking well, about. Yes, well, we get the viewers yeah. to see that notwithstanding... There's quite a twist on it. A twist on the stroke. Yes. yes she's amazingly accurate. But not quite but accurate not enough. Not on that occasion. Not quite accurate enough. <laughs> but there is quite a twist on her backswing. Perhaps she doesn't know that, Richard. We might. No, we I'm might sure she's been told. I'm sure Chris has told her that many times. <laughs> now, with Don Bradman picked the bat up in all the wrong ways and averaged 99.9. Yeah, she'll get on fine. It's where it comes down, this not time, where it goes back. It's a good hoop by Hannon, and she's gone right up to the north boundary. And the score is five four, I believe. Five four. And we have a scoreboard over there, but no operator for it. But I, that was for long four. Well, we're explaining to we, the uh, the multitudes online that the scoreboards which are in place by each lawn, require 11 people to operate them. That's rather more volunteers than can be mustered if you still want to eat. Yeah. So <laughs> later in the tournament, because we're only on day three, the boards, I am reassured, will be manned or womaned yeah. or even childed. But um, <laughs> not today. Anyway, we're making... We're, good attempts to keep the score um, but we have an expert doing it online for you yes i'm sure you're also following croquetscores.com and picking up oh yes all the time yes croquet scores for those of you well you if you're watching on youtube you pretty well should know about croquet scores which has all the results and i think they get thrown phoned through or whatever happens no sent through by electronically more or less as they happen so You'll be pretty much up to date if you look on Croquet Scores. And there is, of course, the dedicated World GC World Championship website. Now they're lining up for Hoop 10. Yellow to play back from the north boundary first. Yep. The other three balls are all placed on the running side of the hoop. I don't know what Hanan can see, whether she could clear the blue ball to a position where it could not get back and get to red. That would be, no, she obviously can't. She's had to play another ball in, attempt to block. block attempted block, I attempt. guess. But uh, Jenny has got a, a choice, but not a very difficult one. Just ran it smoothly. Well, the hoop. Ran it smoothly, yeah. For a, well, a score, we think. I think we're pretty certain it's five all. <laughs> ah, right. Ah, now now it's explained to us. Yes, we're getting very confused. The this is on the topic of the origins of the. Uh, family Chris Clark yeah I have the distinct impression that he was brought up in Essex he was I'm told born in Lancashire which is a good thing Jenny on the other hand did not have her origins either in Manchester or anywhere else in this country but is firmly a native Kiwi Richard, right. tea, ice water. I'm uh, fine, thank you. Okay. Yes, so thank that's, you, be, that's been, it's been pointed out that we've been very confused. Yeah. But then again. Two old men getting confused. Two old men getting confused <laughs> is not unusual. <laughs> Especially when it comes to New Zealand. I've only been there once, but I'm coming back, I warn you. I shall be at Mount Manganui. If you want to come and explain to me about genuine Kiwis. No, you, I, I've had it explained to me. See, the, we use this modern technology to our advantage. Mm. 
<laughs> we don't have a memory that works. Oh, unfortunate Nothing. for the... Uh, and testing Hoop 11, which only was just unfortunate there, was attempting to run that, it came off the wire, moved red way as well. So my thanks, or our thanks, to the person who pointed out that we were getting confused. Didn't get an answer to whether she was in... Maiden name was Williams, which I think it was. Well, I didn't get that. We, we won't dwell on that one. No, we won't, because we've probably got that <laughs> wrong. Probably, yeah. Doesn't tell us. No, I don't think it's, it's, that's purely my memory, so it could be anything. <laughs> it's quite well, a few years back. No, well, I don't go back quite that far. I, as I've probably been revealing more than once, my principal interest in sport over the years has been in cricket. Which <laughs> I was told to stay very quiet about in the presence of several South Africans. I see. Mm. I've, uh... Those of you who've been following the recent series will know what I'm talking about. <laughs> and those of you who don't won't care. Well, my first encounter with croquet was in 2005 when I joined oh, not well. this club but uh, the Worthing Club as it, where it was in this old venue at Hillbarn Golf Club. Yeah. Subsequently well, we're, we're contemporaries in that sense. Yeah. Oh. I started playing in 2004 yeah. and uh, basically it, in all those years I just haven't got any better. Well I saw the 2004 World Championship final here. That was the year before I started playing. I remember it inspired you. Ahmed Nassar won, I believe, in three straight games against Dennis Bullock. The best of five, he won in three straight games. I took up croquet the following year, and subsequently, two years at Worthing, the end of 2007, I joined the Southwick Club when the Worthing Club decided to move. And I've been a member of this. Southwick or Sussex County, as it's officially known. It's yes, it's ever a, since. It's always a confusion as to what's properly to call it, but Sussex County must be right. I think. Anyway, they're still now battling away. They're now on hoop 11. First uh -huh. game, best of three. And then looks in the ideal position. So if anybody's thinking oh. of whatever you're doing, either getting up or going to bed, or doing whatever you're doing. And again, she has done the same thing, John. Oh, She's powered it so hard into yeah, the hoop. I think she and just doesn't take my advice. <laughs> but then again, she hasn't asked for it, but I haven't given it. <laughs> I'm merely commenting from the protection of a privileged position. But Jenny, Jenny on the other, on the other hand, hand, with a much smoother approach, smoothly through. Uh, as to take the lead, six a 6-5 five. Five lead. That was a perfect, uh, well, at least three times I've seen Hanan power the ball like that. And yeah, it's like, not so good. And I'm not sure if it isn't four, but I believe in this game. Well, I think you know, in the origins there's been a lot of technological advances in the observation of croquet over the last few years, which principally I think is this um, super slow-mo, yeah. which shows that yeah. if you hit a croquet ball very hard, it hardly touches the ground. No. And true. if the ground isn't very flat, as perhaps it isn't in Egypt, as the weather conditions are not conducive to growing flat grass, um, then it's much more effective if you hit it very hard. Looks like a good blocking shot on the yellow, coming in with a blue ball there. From here it looks like a blocking shot anyway. But, uh, at a long distance of uh, between 40 and 50 yards away, I think. Does that look like two cricket pitches to you, John? You know no. <laughs> oh. oh, a lovely clearance. Nice shot, hand. though. Very nice clearance. shot. But that was relatively gentle. <laughs> so, you know, it is... Well, we, we know. We, we much admire Egyptian croquet. And the reason is because it's so... The balls are hit so hard and so accurately. Oh, Johnny's nearly just rolled by. 
Now it's set up for Red to score hoop 12, and they would be going to the, the golden hoop, hoop 13. But will Hannon try such a powerful shot this time? It's usually called the golden hoop, but I don't think accurately is it. There's nothing golden about it. No. It's just hoop 13. Yes. I Red. think it probably came in when yeah. they started talking about golden goals in football. Oh, that's actually. possible. Yes. Well, well, that's they, where probably where they get it from. No, it's the golden hoop because it's no, the one that wins. I think that went. It's the ones that wins you. It's the one that wins you the game. Yeah. That one went well up to the right. If anybody they? wants to phone in and check that for us, <laughs> tell us we're wrong again. We have made <laughs> probably, one yeah. or two mistakes. <laughs> well, no, they desperately difficult for that factual error is about. Yeah. I mean, unless we know the people, I mean, I can tell you all about Pierre Baudry and probably will again. <laughs> But I don't obviously know Jenny Clark personally no. or at all. No. I've only met her at these events. She's been at the British Open a few times, and, uh, and she's uh, her and Chris are both uh, very accomplished referees and coaches of the game. Steeped in croquet. Mm. Here come oh another miss. Possibly not having her best day, I don't know. No, she's um, she doesn't change her style, right? It's always the high-powered shot, isn't it? Even when she's trying to run through a hoop. Well, perhaps somebody can phone in or take in and tell us what the facilities are like, are like for croquet in Montreal. Mm. Because I don't know. I've never been to Canada. I've never been to Montreal. I've been to Canada. No, many, many times. Yeah. Yes, for, but um, it, it is a, a game which does rely quite a lot on the surface you're playing. Yeah. And these are pretty good. But of course, we've had this terrible weather, which means that natural rainfall, which is always better for growing grass, has not happened at all. At Eastbourne, when we played the qualifier last week, um, it was very dry conditions there. I don't think they have an automatic irrigation system like mm -hmm. we have here. And uh, although it was very fast, uh, there were more hills on their lawns in evidence than there are here. Well, one they? thing, of course, that it dry grass That's first came to Jenny. is the fact that there are hills. First came to Jenny, 7-5. Well done. So it took quite a long time, and during that time we got confused. And we're apologising for that, but we're still broadcasting. I there will now be a short gap, and it is warming up, so they might want to take a, a refreshment break, and uh, they're quite entitled to do that. And uh, shall we? Uh, meanwhile, we might get some further scores. Yeah. What are other games? Other games, if you've got them to hand. This is I'm going to my. It's like it's like when you when you go to the scorer. How yeah. many overs did he bowl in 1972? Yeah. <laughs> or how many matches did Reg Bamford play yeah. in 2002? Probably quite a lot. Surprisingly he, large he, number. Not so many golf croquet matches as you might think. No, but <laughs> now he plays more golf croquet matches than he's. Yeah, but even so, he's not one of the highest. Uh, participants in these events and number of games and, no i no. think he's trying to uh, conquer the world in this croquet world the gc croquet world as well as the uh in recent AC years world. in recent years the higher number of games has been played by uh Lana tibble quite a few right. times right and uh, mm. steve leonard is now a oh. high number of games each year you see so people do keep records of these things it's, it's all on the uh, you can get it all off the info off the website yeah well of course they you have to play in order to be ranked in the uh, lists for the world and for locally you have to play a certain number of qualifying games which isn't a large number but so ten, uh, ten per year ten per year both both That's forms of the game of course ben rothman failed to do over well the last indeed two years. And ended up having to qualify. But we're now close to the action on a lawn which is immediately adjacent to us, which is occupied by
It says seeking for assistance as to who that is. Yeah. I think it's the guy I saw pay Ian Barrett last night, right? So, what's the name? It's, uh, See, we're assisted as commentators yeah. in some instances by the yeah. fact that the player has his name on his back. Yeah. I, know, I know that yesterday the commentary was seriously prejudiced by the fact that the Spanish player was wearing an Australian shirt, oh, but that confusion was resolved by people who knew Manuel, even though they call him Manuel, which I don't think was correct. <laughs> but anyway, they're lining up again and have lined up and are now playing on the broadcast court, which is four, and the game, second game is underway, and I see uh, our cameras now move to the south boundary down there from where it was. It was on the ah, east you're, boundary. You, you lucky people, are, you're getting a different angle and a very good angle on that hoop. I think Paul has been relieved by, is that Trish who's gone down there? The, who was on the roof earlier? Uh, yes. It's a hard life for these camera people. Yeah. Jenny's now going to try and jump the red ball, which is in hoop one with her blue ball. Which oh, she has ball. done brilliantly. I didn't, I didn't see the black brilliant. ball behind the blue. It was a beautiful jump. Well, round of applause and, for An this excellent contest. position for hoop two as well. Angled. From, where, from here, I didn't see the black ball was behind blue, and she was. Uh, what is that? Angled hoop. Yeah. Four yards out. Yeah. Puts the jump shot right in front of the next hoop. I mean, sometimes you get lucky. Yeah, you do. Sometimes you don't. So uh, the game concluded yesterday where. Dominic Nunns was playing Morton Weaver, the Norwegian, and he jumped at an angle through hoop nine and ran ten. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, yes. Well, there are some, usually in the in this course of this tournament, and thinking about three years ago, there is a kind of informal competition for the most yeah. remarkable shot. Yeah. And <laughs> the two competitors for it last year were last year, last time it was played, were, were both very remarkable, as I recall. A jump shot over the peg, yeah. and, a, and, a, and a putting the ball through the hoop from, was it, was it the hoop? Oh, I don't know which hoop it was, but it was right across the court. Jenny playing black to try and score hoop two, which she fails to do. That was... Well, by comparison with the jump shot that got her there, that yeah. was relatively straightforward. It was. Yeah. It just shows yeah. how margins for error are so small. And, uh, Very much right so. One time, wrong next time. Ah, that's not a, not a great place to be. So there's another, another shot of hoop here for Jenny. Blue this time. That's a better place. To be. Yeah, but she's. <laughs> but no, I think actually think she's engaged in fair, the draws. So, yeah. uh, she, she was trying to put the, do the the shot, which I don't know whether it's accurate to call it, but I call it the dribble. Where you you just gently go through the hoop from the wrong side, and it goes through about an inch or something. That's been well cleared. Place. So the balls have now been smashed to this part of the lawn and Jenny will play gently into a position where she can't be hit by the yellow so a little maneuver seems so a little bit distracted because the play on lawn four is in between us and lawn <laughs> so play on lawn five sorry is in between us and lawn four at the moment yeah we're we're full of excuses but and, uh, <laughs> but they're all valid all valid so it's distracting us somewhat we have Stephen Mullimer and his opponent moving around in their eye line by the truth <laughs> and there's a railway track and everything there are some trains today John too ah oh, no there that's a, there that's very few on Saturday <laughs> This well, people know, people who've been listening in will no doubt have heard that the railway drivers of Britain are revolting. <laughs> they're pro they're protesting. One of our uh, competitors here, 
Toby, yes, sir. Toby Savage. Toby was. He's, he, I, I don't know if he's a driver, but he is he, on the roll. He's a. Oh, he's a driver. Yeah, it's certainly. But he's obviously oh, yeah, yeah. officially off on leave at the moment, so he can't blame yeah. him for anything. <laughs> Ah, now you see she's taken my advice this time, and ah, just gently, gently pushed yeah. the ball it's, at an angle. It, it's taken four. I shouldn't say pushed, but played the ball at an yeah. angle, and ran the hoop. At least about four attempts of failure before she has well, adopted that method. <laughs> yeah, but of course, at hoop two, there's no point trying to go off the end of the lawn you've just got to score it no this is true I know, yes to be yeah. fair to be fair she was trying to get good position on the next hoop yeah but my personal experience is clear i usually if i hit it hard at the hoop it didn't go yeah. through anyway jenny is now laying up lagging up to use a phrase which seems to be popular and relatively within a short time they will be contesting the it seems so Stephen is having quite a battle with this his opponent he's I believe trailing at the moment three four from what I can see on the pegs not that I should be diverting us on to what's going on Ah, in, it's in Portugal. Portuguese. Thank you. We are now reliably informed that the person who's standing in our way is from Portugal. Jusen Tursa. Now, I, I saw him last night and he had a, a win over Ian Burridge in two games. Did he? So he's obviously a useful player. Well, let's have a, uh, do a bit of rapid research. You do that, John, I'll try and keep track of what's going on on the, on the lawn we should be commentating on, which is four. Alan is just playing a long clearance shot, but she missed the black, so black looks like it's in a good position now. To get hoop three. Oh, Jenny tried to jaws and it bounced out, so it's not a perfect shot. Gives Hannan a chance to remove, take position, she's going for taking position. Pretty good Will it? There is uh, quite a bit of applause in the background, and it appears as though uh, Ian Burridge has been playing Ben Rothman, but we don't uh, know. He has, yes, we, he did we, tell me that. We don't know the... Uh, the score up there. I'm just, I'm just getting a message. Do you want, you know who won on the Ian, Ian, I don't know if that's one up. Just getting a message from uh, on WhatsApp. Those of you who know all about that, right. and it's from, <laughs> oh no, it, it's from my wife, and I don't know what she's trying to tell me. But it isn't probably isn't good. <laughs> um, but also, I get told that the um, Georgia May Fenton and Courtney Tullock have won Commonwealth gold as England take four gymnastics titles on day four. See, there's another competition going on in this country, much less prestigious, of course, than this, but it is the Commonwealth Games. We. Uh, some of us speak rather acidly about that because we did, of course, apply for croquet, indeed golf croquet, to be included in the Commonwealth Games. Unfortunately, they don't understand these things. And they said no. Croquet, of course, did once appear as a demonstration sport in the Olympics. No, it was not. It was a full sport. It was a full sport. Yes, I think It was so. a very low number of competitors. Well, right? yes, <laughs> only a very few. It was, wasn't it in 1904? Yeah. I think it probably was. Was it uh, on by the French as well? I <laughs> seem to remember. Well, it was in France, yeah, but I don't know. I don't think there was very many competitors in it. It was from the French. Well, no. I mean, there are all sorts of stories about Olympic competition in those days. 
people climbing over the wall and saying, can I join in and win <laughs> the gold medal? Anyway, they've, a lot of powerful set clearances have taken place, which have resulted in Rajan having to... Hanan, sorry. Hanan Rajan, I'll get that right eventually. But she's having to play powerfully across the court and misses. But that was... Jenny has another opportunity for Black to run. Yep. Hoop three. So steady now. Oh, oh. Well, it was quite a long way away. There's been quite a few uh Attempts at hoops that haven't gone well for them. <laughs> Being heckled by the official photographer, yeah. <laughs> Introduce yourself. Good afternoon. Mr. Ray Hall, official photographer to the organization. With a badge and everything. It doesn't say official photographer, but... I've discovered where these branches come from. Oh, well. Cairo. <laughs> Cairo? Well, that's as good a place as any. Yeah. Well, bearing in mind the World Golf Club, they... That's was, right. Uh, started in Cairo, effectively. Not of approval. It, we're, Ray, suffering from the difficulty that we're commentating on a game that is 50 yards away. <laughs> <laughs> and no cameras is up there. No, the cameras are near up there. Of course they're nearer. But uh, it's not easy to move the commentary position. No, quite. As the people well, from New I'm Zealand going... and Spain who are listening in and correcting I, I'm us. going to move the photography position nearer to home. Oh, right. Well, uh, <laughs> good, very good to see the official photographer. See you, Ray. Uh, if you and if you wander over there, you'll get caught on camera. Oh, he's gonna, <laughs> and just on cue, the yeah, official the photographer takes an official yeah. photograph of the, the commentary team. Graham just informed me that he and Burridge beat Ben Rockman to nil. Well, now there's a there's a news item for all you interested watchers. No doubt it's already get onto croquet scores and get it confirmed. It's already popped up all the But Ben Rockman, who yet last time it was played, which was here three years ago. Um, has been beaten again. Actually, that's probably the first time. No, he did. He lose. Did he lost in other games as yes, well? Yes, he has. Also, yes, it's not gone so well. And so Steve, he's Stephen on playing Stephen now. Beat Ian last night. So it's all. Oh yeah. Different. Well, that's uh, anything to happen. <laughs> I can reliably inform everybody that Ian Burridge is not from New Zealand. He represents Wales in this he competition. He claims to have been born in Wales. I'm sure this is true, but we have the interesting feature when the Burridge family are engaged in croquet, which is that Ian, father, plays for Wales, and Ewan, who you might think Scottish or Welsh. No, he's actually plays for England. So they play against each other in internationals. And uh, the result is by no means con confirmed. I think if, uh, we've had a situation where in the inter-counties that uh, um, Ian has played for Nottinghamshire and Ewan has played for Glamorgan. So that's even <laughs> more of a big shot. Uh. <laughs> Because Does this mean that Ewan was actually born in Wales? I don't know. I mean, we'll have to no. sort this out. No, he has a Welsh father. I know he has a... Well, that's, that's enough, isn't it? Oh, well, that's enough. Yes, it at, is. At, at the time Ewan but, well, was coming into Croquet, he wouldn't have got into the Nottinghamshire team. He yes. probably would now, but he didn't oh, then. So he, he, went, would, yes. he went in for Glamorgan. There were really? Players, so he's been playing for Glamorgan. He is just transferring to Nottingham. Ah, and he right. doesn't have to miss a season. Oh. Because Nottingham is his county of birth. 
Yes, ah. that's. We've got even this more is information now. This now. Is, we're now, you, from, we're uh, now getting into the complications from, from, of how you qualify to play for a county in the inter-county tournament in in England, um, whereas we should be watching Jenny Clark Jenny of New Zealand scoring, scoring a hope three, hope three, and running right down to hope four, probably a and little beyond bit, it. probably a little bit beyond hope four. If, yeah. Well, we'll have to have people to phone in and tell us whether it's beyond who because we can't see. No. But the camera person is much closer. And we can see her. Yep. <laughs> Perhaps uh, Jack may have it on the camera right in there, the location of that ball. Yes. Can you tell us whether the black ball has gone beyond the hoop? Because we can't see. It's beyond. It's beyond. Is it? yeah. Yellow is similarly awkwardly placed but blue is approaching in a better shape to run the hoop but obviously the whenever you play a shot like that of course you are then able to say well it's it's a good defensive position He's played back now with black right. in front of hoop four. In front of the hoop. Whether that Some is... might say it rather optimistically, bearing him in the position of yellow. Yeah, but um will she be trying to get to you know she'll creep it up blue, I would have thought, if she can get to it. That'll be following yellow. She has cleared it nicely. Yes. Long well, is it en enough to get it onto lawn twelve? With actually oh, seven, actually. <laughs> <laughs> the semi-mythical lawn twelve. No, I mean, you, uh, just saying. That she was twelve lawns here one time. Oh well, yes, yeah, well, but way before I was involved in crack. <laughs> well, eleven lawns is plenty. It was sold to the tennis court or something. Yeah. The history of it is, I believe. Oops. Oh dear, Jenny, that's not good. Miss well, those of you who have been watching for a long time are probably getting used to the idea of those balls clearances being hit 100% of the time, but not this time, and this time it will be 100%. But again, she's gone off with the yeah, red ball beyond the So, Black keeps trying to pressure by bringing it into front of the hoop and that is just about okay. I think this will be a hoop shot by yellow. And it was. Comfortably run. Blue's been sent to the penalty area on the west boundary. For the very good reason that she's offside. Yeah. We could, of course, attempt to explain the offside rule. It's not that difficult. It's probably easier than trying to explain the football oh, offside rule. That's the, that's the little thing I was alluding to, <laughs> yes. But then we aren't paid Gary Lineker salaries, so we can't be that no, good at it. But also, I mustn't make any jokes about my wife, because I have it on good authority, like Google, that she's actually listening. <laughs> Nod twice for, for yes. <laughs> no, I, I, you know, Technology is a wonderful thing. It's even better if you know how to work it. All right, well, balls are now gathered around hoop five. So I need to play here yellow. Now, will red be taking on a hoop or a clearance here? Oh, hang on. John's playing with his smart watch. Um, yeah, well, I'm, I'm sure. I'm getting, mes <laughs> I'm getting messages. 
Oh, that was definitely a hoop attempt by Hanan, which... I'm getting messages again, from the family. ...wasn't successful. Jenny now trying the black ball to hoop five. And not... I think she might have jaws. Yeah. I think it's jaws. I just... Hello, dear. Uh, oh. This is very informal, but I have just had a message from my wife set, which says, Yes, I am! Exclamation mark. Which means that she's listening and Ooh. watching as a attempted clearance from not that far away just feathered off the blue ball, moved it slightly into some better position to clear the red ball. But we uh, we probably should explain for those just tuning in that. For technological reasons, the commentary position has to stay where it is. But for good competitive reasons, the game upon which we are seeking to comment is taking place about 50 yards away. Yeah. So that it's quite difficult. And attempted clearance of black is missed by Hannah. Past north of the hoop. Which That's means that both of her balls are on the boundary and both on the west boundary now. Jenny is right in front of the hoop. So pretty straightforward. Shot down the lawn to try and gain as good a position as possible for hoop six, and she's done pretty well. It's just slightly. Still, that would be, I think, rather than entirely, un entirely acceptable. I was about to say unacceptable, but not. I didn't mean it. That's whether she can get another one in and hopefully block the red ball shot at black. Well, it's, it's be left ideal. It's gonna be a pretty good shot anyway. But I think she yeah. might have done it. Well, made it. No, I think she. <laughs> my guess is she's overshot, but like yellow might have done it as well. As yeah. Anything could have happened. Right. From Here's... this angle, we just have to wait and see what happens. I think. John. Here we go. It comes across and oh, she's, got, she's cleared. She's well, cleared the blue. One of them, one of them but not black, the other. Black is still could possibly run. Well, we're now we're now going to be told all about New Zealand. <laughs> we have a. New Zealander, Mr. Nelson Morrow, about to join us. Well, that's very, yes. Well, uh, the um, the confusion about New Zealand has resulted in us being, well, not sacked, but replaced. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I'm going to introduce you. I'm going to introduce you, you to Mr. Nelson Morrow, who is a New Zealander. Born and bred. Born and bred, as he said. Tells me that he comes Plays croquet in Mount Manganui? No, I don't. No, 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 I play in a little club called Walkworth, which is about an hour north of Auckland. But you have played at Mount Manganui. I have played Mount Manganui, yeah. yep. So I wasn't mis no, no, misunderstanding no, no, it no, when no, you no. told me that. Only a few days ago. But anyway, we're, we're going to get sacked. No, we've done enough, is another way of putting it. 4-2, I believe, to Jenny at the moment. And uh, my wife, who I know is listening to this commentary, because technology reveals that. It probably agrees that I've done enough. <laughs> but don't worry, people. I'll be back. <laughs> As I say. Yeah, well. Uh, but uh, anyway, you, you, you've, got to, you've, got, you, you've been given time just to get to, yourself, warm myself up, uh, to, get, uh, to get ready for this late night. Um, well, it's only... It's five a clock coming towards five. Yes, it? but it, this has been. And I've had a, a leisurely day off today, which has oh, been very that's nice. It's been very good for you. Yeah, yes. After an exhausting day yesterday, but it's it's this is a slightly exhausting game for people to watch because <laughs> it's not making. It makes very rapid progress yeah. for a time, and then it gets stalled. Yeah. But that's the nature of the game. It is the nature of the game sometimes. And the um, the assessment by 
the leading expert here, that's me, of course, he says, <laughs> is that the, based on acute personal experience, is that if you hit a ball too hard from very close to the hoop, it doesn't go through. We've witnessed quite a bit of that in this Have you? day. Right. <laughs> and Anna's had one or two misfortunes. Yes, so accuracy is the name of the game, really. This is appearing to be a red at the hoop, I think, and so she's lining that up. Yeah. Well, now, no, 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 she's she's going no, so then, no, you're, from your position as a, as a fully fledged competitor yes. in this tournament, <laughs> you would not go for that. No, uh, from that angle, no. There's no other. There's no other danger ball, so I don't see the point no. of actually. Yeah, right. Now she's managed to go to the boundary, which allows her to draw in a hoop running position. Yeah. That was yes. a, a much better result, I feel. Yes. Absolutely. Now there may be others <laughs> out there who, like me, think that running the ball to the boundary is yeah. not a very good hoop running position. <laughs> These people are better. <laughs> oh, I think we're about to be uh, we're about to, to be, be replaced. I think, well, I think that's where we're going to hand over the the ceremonial binoculars. And um, are you ready to step in, Nelson? Yeah, sure. All right. All right, you get you get presented get with the binoculars. ceremonial binoculars. Thank you. Have you got someone there? And, uh, good to talk to you all, and uh, come back to... Good evening, everybody. Good evening, everybody. Just let you know I'm going to stop the stream here and then start the new stream for you, which is day three, session three. I'll see you shortly.